That's what he wants. Forget it, Dagan. Please, Vince, I don't want any trouble. We said leave it alone, didn't we? Anytime you want to finish this, Vince, you just let me know. Hey, wait, do Why are you? What's the matter with you? You're trying to start trouble around here and have the sheriff nosing into our affairs. I don't like this, Vince. You're taking too big a chance playing around with Sheriff Kincaid's daughter. All right. So I'm taking a chance. I happen to like it that way. Makes sense, Vince. That Kincaid's meter and a wolf tracking a calf. <laughs> so I heard. Well, uh, his kind don't bother me none. <laughs> so it's none of my business. I'm just trying to be a friend, that's all. You're always running around with the wrong kind of people. And who should I run around with? The ones the high and mighty Cartwrights picked for me? Well, look, I didn't mean that, and you know it. But you are going to get in trouble with a man like Vince Dagan. If I get in trouble, I'll handle it. And what's wrong with Vince Dagan? Oh, what's wrong with Vince Dagan? He's a drunk and a thief. We had to throw him off the Ponderosa for stealing. Well, this is not the Ponderosa, and I don't plan on holding one little mistake against him for the rest of his life. All right, Dolly, forget it. Look, I don't want to fight with you. I don't want to fight with you either, Joe. Maybe Vince isn't everything I'd like him to be. But he's good to me. I get lonesome. Dad never lets me out of this house. Now, don't forget your father being sheriff. He's seen a lot of the bad side of life. Maybe he just wants to protect you from the wrong kind of people. I guess he wouldn't consider you the wrong kind of people, would he, Joe? You don't consider me the right kind of people, do you? No, I didn't say that. You didn't have to say that, even when we were kids in school. All you Cartwrights consider yourself too good for anybody else. Dolly, that's not true, and you what know What are you doing it. here, Cartwright? And you, you get in the house. I was just walking Dolly home. I happened to see her at the store. She had no business at the store. I told her to stay home. Well, wait a minute. There's nothing to get so excited about. Don't you tell me how to run my family. Now, you get out of here and stay away from my daughter. Look, Mr. Kincaid, I've known Dolly for a long time. I think it's up to her to tell me whether or not she'd like to see me. She don't make the decisions around here, I do. Look, I told you to get in the house. Look, if you just listen. Now, look, you. You try to understand this. I ordered her to stay home. If she tries to see you or anybody else, I'll whip the hide off her back. Now, you get out of here and stay away from my daughter. Do as he says, Joe. 
Zjevil jsem dali. Pa, I did all my work. I even sewed your shirts the way you asked me to. Well, now that's nice. Must have took you most all day, didn't it? Just about. Sure. Well, I'm glad to see you got more to you than your more ever had. Her now, she'd have gone out dancing or something as soon as I turned my back. Please, Pa, do we have to talk about that? What else do you want me to talk about? Man does the best he knows how and his woman goes running off with another man. Pa, I'm tired. I'm going Don't to... you walk away from me. I told you not to leave the house, didn't I? You can't keep me locked up. I'm not one of your prisoners. All I did was walk down to the store with Vince Dagan. Yes, and you come back with young Cartwright. You're just like your ma. One man ain't enough for you. Ma didn't run out. You drove her off, just like you're going to drive me off. I'm not trying to drive you out, honey. I'm trying to protect you. Dolly, you ma believed anything any man said to her. You're just like she was. You're as pretty as she is, Dolly. And I'm not going to have you running off with the first worthless saddle tramp that whispers in your ear. I wasn't running off. I just went down to the store. To meet a man. Yes, to meet a man. I meet a dozen men. Because I'm no good. Because I'm just like my mom. Isn't that what you want me to say? <laughs> And Adam have to ride up there and check that drift fence out today. You sound as if you don't want it. Well, Hoss wants to follow up on a wolf sighting saw over in the canyon. You still feel sure it was wolves, do you? Oh, sure, Pa. Ain't no cowards ever go up in that country that high. And besides, them tracks is way too big. Well, it's possible. Old timers insist there's still a lot of timber wolves up there. Boy, I sure would like to get a look at one of them. Well, if lack of game in the mountains has driven a pack down this low, we better do more than just take a look at one. I understand they can pull down a grown steer when they're hungry. That's right, Paul. Yeah, the miserable brutes that try to trap. I just don't like putting out poison bait. Oh, that ain't no good, Paul. Look here, how come me and Adam don't ride up there and take a look around? We could check with old man Traeger. He's always bragging about how he used to hunt them wolves for a living anyhow. Mm -hmm. Well, let's check the fence first, and uh, then we'll decide. Is breakfast ready? Well, we were just thinking about supper. You sure you had enough sleep? No, not quite, but it's gonna have to do. Oh, well, do you think maybe you could talk yourself into a riding fence with us, huh? Older brother, how can you be so practical this early in the morning? Maybe because he's been up for a little while. You were uh, out a little late, weren't you? Yeah, well, I had to ride all the way from Placerville. I stopped off at Mormon Flats to get something to eat. Ran into the Kincaids. Oh? Was that uh, on purpose or accident? Well, it was a little bit of both. You know, I really feel sorry for Dolly Kincaid. Sorry? She never had any trouble uh, finding somebody to chase after her. No, I think it's the other way around. I think she never had any trouble finding somebody to chase. Well, what are you worried about, little brother? You ain't never had no trouble out running her. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so worried about Dolly? Ah, oh, she's running around with that Vince Dagan. Dagan? I mean, that, uh, that fellow we fired last year? Yeah. I ran into him coming out of Callahan's store. Yeah? Yeah, Dagan and I had a few words. When I took Dolly home, her father ran me off with a shotgun. Uh, you don't mean literally. Well, he didn't pull the trigger, but he wasn't kidding. Well, what's he got against you? You and Dolly have known each other for years. Yeah, well, he can go whistle up a tree off for me. I wasn't going to take Dolly out, but I think I will now. Well, don't get involved in a family affair. Kincaid's wounds are kind of raw right now, so give him a little time to settle down. Hmm. This doesn't seem right to me that she keep his daughter locked up like a prisoner just because he's mad at the whole world. Well, I don't say it's right, but uh, you're not going to help Dolly any by waving a red flag in front of Kincaid's nose. I never thought about it that way. Tell you what. Why don't you ride out tomorrow morning with Adam and Hoss? They're going out to check that wolf sign that Hoss thinks he saw up in the canyon. Now, what are you trying to do, Pa? Get my mind off Dolly Kincaid. Well, that's what you wanted me to do, wasn't it? Expecting little Joe Cartwright? You were drinking last night. Then you started fighting. I was afraid my father would see me. There wasn't anything else I could do. Of course, there was nothing else you could do. It was my fault. I come by to apologize. Apologize? 
Yeah, I'm trying to. I couldn't sleep last night thinking. I don't know how to say this, but when you walked out on me yesterday, I just knew I ain't ever gonna let you do that to me again. I've been standing out there, waiting for your paw to leave. I know how it is between you and him, the way he treats you. You don't know how it is. It's like being locked up in a cage. I can't stand it anymore. I know. And I ain't gonna stand by and let it happen to you. I'm gonna take you out of here. I, I don't think I'm taking too much for granted. Because I think you feel about me the same as I do about you. Yes, you know how I feel about you. It's just that I was never really sure of you. Well, you are now, ain't you? You could sneak away in the morning, early, beat me up on the trail, I'll tell you where. That's what you want, ain't it? Oh, you know it's what I want more than anything else in the world. But people don't just do this. They don't just pack up and leave. They do if they're in love. What about my dad? Well, I heard him talking to some men. He, he's going to be pretty busy in the morning. No need to worry about him. It'll work out fine, honey. I'm going to be taking care of you from now on. Do it. Oh, Vince, you don't know how I've dreamed about this. To get away, to be with you. Hey, look at this. These are the same tracks I found down below. Yeah, no coyote made tracks that big. Quite a pack of them, wouldn't you say? Yep. What do you make of it? Well, over there, it looks like something big's been drug along. Yeah, it's a plain trail. Let's follow it. Tendon on that hind leg's been cut half in two. I just don't see how the wolves dragged him that far. They didn't drag him. A couple of them probably worried him until one of them got his teeth in his leg. The wolf got dragged. Yeah, I reckon we must have scared them all, huh? Yeah. They didn't even touch the meat. Yeah, we didn't do ourselves any favors either. They'll just drag down the next stray steer they come across. Now, yeah, what do you think we ought to do? Well, I'll go back and tell Pa what we run into. Why don't you two go on up to Traeger's cabin? See if you can hire him to help us out. It's a good idea. Now, a horse and I will bunk in with Traeger. We'll work out of his place. All right. Save a couple of those wolves for me. We'll see you around the end of the week. Right. I was worrying you wouldn't come. I told you I'd be waiting. Oh, I've waited so long for you to come along. Anybody see you get away? No. I was so lucky. Some outlaws robbed the bank last night. Pa headed out with a posse after them. Well, you sure were lucky. Did you, uh, notice which way they were headed? Toward Fells Crossing. Why? <laughs> well, uh, you wouldn't want to run into your pa now, would you? Come on. Get out of here. The further we get from Mormon Flats, the better I like it. I wonder what's keeping Dagan. You know what's keeping him. That girl. Hell, he should have kept the girl out of this. Everything came off real smooth. It's even more money in the vault than we figured on. Now, you know that ain't good enough for Vance Dagan. He wants the money and the girl. <laughs> I'm plenty sick of what he wants all the time. If that girl gets in my way, I'll... Now, calm down, Roby. I think it's right funny. We robbed the bank, and he, he, he runs off with the sheriff's daughter. I think that's really funny. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think it's so funny. If he doesn't show up here in another 10 minutes, I'm moving on. You gonna go without the money, Clay? Now, Vince knows what he's doing. Now, he's got that money in his saddlebags. <laughs> well, now, did you boys have a good sleep for yourselves? We ain't been down out of these saddles for one single minute. 
You're setting a pretty hard pace, Kincaid. We're doing the best we can. Well, your best ain't good enough. Not for me, it ain't. If you spend less time worrying about keeping up with me and more time looking for signs, you may find something. Now go on back there and take a good look this time. I'm heading up into the high country. You're going on alone? It's faster. You'd only hold me up. If you see anything, fire a signal. That is, if you know how to use a gun. Come on, boys. We better get back. Do what he tells us. You said they was headed for Fells Crossing. They were when I saw them. Is my father with them? They must have split up. Or else they're backtracking. How many were there when you saw them? I don't know. Is my father with Forget them? Forget about your father, will you? Vince, please don't let him take me back. Vince, say you'll take care of me. Sure, sure. Vince, what are you going to do? You said you wanted me to take care of you, didn't you? And that's just what I'm going to do. Didn't even see me. Come on, let's get out of here. I told you we'd get in trouble. Every time Dagan gets mixed up with a woman, we're in trouble. That ain't no ordinary woman. That's the sheriff's daughter. <laughs> Look, it's one thing to hold up the bank at Mormon Flats, but it ain't part of the job to wait around and get hung for it. We should have cut the money into shares. Each man would be on his way by now. I'd think on that if I was you, Roby. What chance would one man have alone out there? One man against all them possmen. We stick together, we got a chance. We split up later, when we're out of danger. Just like Dagan figured it. Oh, it's Dagan and the girl. I told you not to worry. Are you late, Dagan? Fimps, what are they doing here? Oh, the boys? Why, you met Clegg, Roby, and Poker in town the other day, remember? Well, they're old friends, and I thought they might like to ride along with us for a while. It's all right, ain't it? Sure. Just surprised me for a minute, that's all. What took you so long? Why, ain't you heard? Big bank robbery and Mormon flats last night. In fact, we run into a posse back of the trailer piece. They didn't see you, did they? Nah, we dodged them. Dolly here's right good at dodging posses. She ain't a bit anxious to have her paw catch up to her. Yeah, I'll bet them bank robbers ain't a bit anxious to have her paw catch up to them, neither. <laughs> Isn't funny. A bank cashier was killed. No, it ain't funny, Poke. I'm sorry, ma'am. That ain't no concern of ours, honey. Main thing is we keep your paw from catching up to us. Come on, boys. <laughs> Trigger. Ain't seen you two fellas in a coon's age. What brings you up around these parts? 
Well, we ran into what we think is a wolf sign in Cedar Canyon. Wolf sign? Uh-huh. Yeah, we found where they drug down one of our steers. Adam sent us up here. I thought you might want to help. I remember you telling me one day, Mr. Trigger, about being a professional wolfer. Yeah, I was, for money. Cost you $10 and I keep the pelts. All right, you got a deal. Is it all right if we bunk with you for a couple of days? Uh, suit yourself, but you got to pay for your own grub. Say, uh, uh, speaking of wolves, you didn't run into Sheriff Kincaid back there. Kincaid? No, why should we? You mean you haven't heard? There was a big bank robbery in Mormon Flats last night. A bank robbery? Sure was. Sheriff himself told me. <laughs> a bank robbery in Mormon Flats? That is isn't it? Yeah, I reckon it is that, but I don't reckon there's anything we can do about it. While we're sitting here talking about it, the wolves probably packing off some more of our steers. Yeah, I guess you're right. Now, come on, let's go. Uh, don't rush me, Jess. Don't rush me. I ain't walking all the way down there. I gotta get my horse and saddle him. Hey, someone's coming. It must be the rest of that Kincaid posse. Why don't you have Trigger saddle up? I'll talk to you. Dagan, what are you doing? Dolly. Vince, what's the trouble? Keep her out of this. Clank and poke, keep him covered. I'll get his gun. What's the matter, Dagan? Can't you take care of this yourself? All right, you two, drop your guns. I said drop them. Well, looky here. All just one big happy family. <laughs> Joe, you know anything about this? You still want trouble, Dagan? Why don't you put your gun away? I'll give it to you. Vince, I want to know why get you're in doing the house. this. Hope, get her in the house and keep her there. Come on. Come on, Dagan, put your gun away. Keep pushing, then I'll bust this gun right over your head. I'll take care of you later. You. What do you do here? I'm just a trapper, that's all. Cartwright boys asked me to help to catch some wolves and pestering that beef. You got a lot of grub in that cabin? Some. Tagan, you ain't figuring on holding up here, are you? You got a better idea. What's the matter, Tagan? Posse getting too close? Anybody else around here? Just the Cartwright boys. Folks don't come up here often. That's just fine. All right. Come on, in the house. out of sight. Stay here. Till I say we move. Till you say. I don't think you know what you're doing. That posse we saw. How do we know that's all of them? Suppose they split up and come in behind us. Well, I'll figure that out when it happens. Poker. I play what I got in front of me. I never bet on what the next car's gonna be until it falls. Get out there and put those horses in the barn and get some firewood in here. Let's warm this place up. So I'm trying to duck the posse, huh, Vince? Supposing I am. You know old man Kincaid. 
Would you want him catching up with Dolly when she's running off with me? Oh, no. No, I wouldn't want him catching up with me either. Not if I just robbed a bank. What's he mean, Vince? Nothing. Don't pay him no heed. Hey, what you got in the saddlebags, Vince? You don't seem to want to get very far away from them. You did rob the bank, didn't you, Vince? All right, so we robbed the bank. So why? For money, that's why. Where'd you think you was gonna live? Dolly. Look, Dolly, I did that for you. I was gonna buy you all the nice things you never had in your life. But, Vince, you have to kill for it. Well, that bank clerk should know it went for his gun, not with old Vince Dagan around. <laughs> Looks like you pushed a little bit too far this time, Vince. Who oh, did I? I got the money and the girl, didn't I? And what do you got? You're dead. Any time I tell Polk to pull that trigger, that's what you got. That's the honest truth, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> I ought to kill you, Dagan. I ought to kill you the time I caught you stealing from us. <laughs> Should have done it. Now, don't you worry about it, Hoss. He's gonna get it. That posse will be back, and Sheriff Kincaid will be with him. Now, don't you think Vince figured that out? Why else you think you brung that girl along? Shut up about the girl! Hey, you now, that's a real good question, Vince. Why did you bring the girl? Well, it's plain enough to see. That Sheriff Papa Hurst comes around here looking for her. Vince's gonna tell him to go away, else that girl's gonna get bad hurt. Ain't that right, Vince? <laughs> I said shut up about the girl tonight! You should not. You should not have done that. You shouldn't have done that at all. Clothes for you, honey. And everything you ever wanted. Don't worry about anything. Everything will be all right. You believe that, don't you? Two boys up here for a wolf hunt, huh? That's right. That posse's gonna get them some wolves, too. And it's gonna be the two-legged kind. Now, you two listen to me. If that posse shows, you're gonna tell them you hired us as wolfers, understand? Oh, they're not gonna believe that. They know you, Dagan. They're gonna believe it, all right. When they leave, you're going to ride along with us until we clear this part of the country. And there ain't going to be any mishaps or else there are going to be two less cartwrights, understand? Put them horses away. Yeah. Hey, where's the girl? Well, what do you care? <laughs> You better be careful, Dagan. He's gonna steal your girl away from you. Take it easy, Joe. Oh, don't worry, horse. They need us. They need us real bad. Don't push your luck. Leave him alone. How do we know the posse's even out there? They might have turned back. Why ain't taking that chance? Yeah, well, maybe you better bury Traeger while you're at it. Sometimes them posses get pretty nosy. Yeah. Craig's right. We're gonna dig a grave up on your feet. You're like a wolf, ain't you? You don't know what you're doing. You change your mind without rhyme or reason. Dolly, we got things to do. We're gonna bury Traeger. 
Well, honey, it's, it's the least we can do, ain't it? Well, find shovels in the barn. Flag, you watch them. And Hall's here. He's gonna help us. Up on your feet. Move in, Pope. Dolly, you help Clegg keep an eye on him. Stop looking at me like that. You try anything and you won't see your little brother. <laughs> we're gonna get you, Diggin. One way or another, we're gonna get you. Come on, dig. Let's get started. What's the matter with you? Somebody gotta watch him, don't they? Besides, you ought to thank me. Who'd have thought of the barn, huh? Better get your mind off of her. She ain't gonna have no part of you. <laughs> How far do you think you're gonna get after you leave this territory, Clay? <laughs> they don't even know who we are. Oh, we do. <laughs> well, that ain't gonna make much of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Get me shape every day, every day of the week. I'm gonna eat and drink until I bust. <laughs> well, that sounds real great, Clay. Here, yeah. how many men do you think you kill? <laughs> well, I see. I don't rightly remember now. I see there's one, two. What are you doing with them, Dolly? You're not their kind. Come on, give me the gun, Dolly. You just want to save your necks. Yours and Haas. Yeah, that's right. I want to save our necks. And I want to save your neck, too. I don't believe you. Nobody ever did anything decent for me. Nobody except Vince. Oh, nobody but Vince. You think Vince robbed that bank for you? He robbed it for himself. He'll kick you out the day he's tired of you. Don't say that. It's true, Dolly. You turn me in right along with Vince. Well, this is my chance to live. And I'm taking it. Nobody gives you anything but what you take for yourself. Oh, come on, Dolly, that isn't so, and you know it. You don't think I'd use this, do you? One more step. Well, yeah, Dolly, I think you'd use it. To keep from going back to that father of mine, I'd do anything. Joe tried to get away. I stopped him. That's the try. And now I'm gonna fix you real good. Diggin, I never did figure you for much guts. Why don't you try taking him without that pistol in your hand? 
When I'm good and ready, I will. Now sit down! You did fine, darling. Real fine. Is back for a second season. I feel that we're playing a very dangerous game. <laughs> We've done something terrible. The world premiere of Tangle Season 2, July 20, exclusive to Showcase. An ordinary school, three extraordinary. Time. Thank you, pardon. You said fuck you with a P. Oh my God, I love disabled people. This sort of thing's fine. That sort of thing. Not fun. Summer Heights High, Thursdays at 9 on Comedy. Riding back and forth through these canyons all night, what good does it do? Don't forget, Sheriff Kincaid hasn't had any more sleep than we have. That Kincaid, he's like a wolf on the scent. He ain't gonna give up till he gets what he come after. No, neither are we. John and I are right over by old man Traeger's place. Kincaid might not have been there yet. The rest of you, take a look through that box canyon down there. You're so smart, now what do we do? Told you I figured when I come to, didn't I? Well, I gotta figure it. Well, then, Vince, why don't you just tell us what we're gonna do? Well, I'm gonna stay in here. What about the rest of us? Sheriff don't know the rest of you. Ain't like you the posse would. You're going out there. I ain't talking to no lawman. You don't got no need to. Horse Cartwright's gonna do that for you. He hired you boys to hunt wolves. Like I said, remember? I'll try to remember. You better. I'm gonna be right in here with this gun on your little brother's head. And he's shooting that starts, he gets it first. Now get. Just don't get nervous with that gun. Hurry up. Boss, what are you doing away out here? Been some wolves pestering some for a cattle. Little Joe and me decided to ride up and talk to Mr. Trigger about it. You couldn't find a better man for the job, Mr. Traeger around? Nope. He rode out early this morning to set some traps. I haven't seen you boys around before, have I? There, there's some men we hired to help us hunt the wolves. Oh. Sheriff Kincaid been by here yet? I ain't seen him, but Mr. Traeger said he saw him yesterday. The sheriff told him about the about the bank robbery. We've been out all night. You know Kincaid. Yeah. I know him well enough to know that whoever those bank robbers are, they ain't gonna get away. I promise you that. Well, if you do see anything around, Hoss, you let us know, will you? We'll be around. Right. Good hunting. Same to you. to go. Hey, you'd have been right proud of court, right, Vince? He did real fine. What do you mean he did real fine? The last thing that deputy said was the posse would be staying around close. What I want to know is how do we get out of here? Yeah, well, I don't know about the rest of you, but Clegg, Polk, Roby, you can ride out any time you want to. What do you mean by that? Well, you went out to the posse. I was told them you were wolfers working for us. They believed it. You can ride out any time you want to. They won't stop you. Hey, listen, kid. You make sense, you know that? I'm no bank robber. I'm a wolfer. I can ride right out of here. Ain't nobody walking. I'm running this shebang. And it looks to me like you're running right into the ground. Of course, you boys want to wait around here for a while. 
Sheriff Kincaid's bound to show up. He's gonna be a little tougher to convince than that deputy. Vince, I'm scared. I want to get out of here. Well, Dolly, what do you have to be scared about? You get all that money? You got a man like Vince Stegan to take care of you? Shut up, Joe! <laughs> Now, you listen to me, Ollie. You're gonna get your cut. Yeah, you boys know when you're gonna get it. When the posse's got you hanging from a tree. Joe, you remember that old big oak tree down the road a piece? Mm-hmm. That thing ought to be big enough to hang at least three of them in a row, don't you reckon? Oh, heck yes. Three of them and room for digging. Stop it! Stop talking that way! Oh, you didn't think it was gonna end any other way, did you, Dolly? I'm trying to be decent, you cut rights. Polk, get rid of him. Yeah, go ahead, Polk. The posse will be here the minute you pull that trigger. That's right. You know, Joe, that Sheriff Kincaid's got, got ears like a wolf. That's what I hear. What about it, Dolly? You know him a lot better than we do. Stop it! Vince, make them stop it! Make them stop it! Never mind! I'll do it myself. No, you're not gonna kill anybody, Vince. You got a long way to go. You can't make it without us. You never was any good, Dagan. Never a day in your life. Good. What Roby says about us riding out of here, that makes pretty good sense. And I'm going to. You just try and stop me. You nowhere. Well, it's real nice to meet your friends on a social level, Dolly. You cut rights. You know everything, don't you? I don't care what you or anyone else think. I'm staying with Vince. Now, uh, you listen to me, all of you. Drop that gun, take it. Those bottom boss, where's the other one? You can't look out! Sit down. I've been asking for this for a long time. We gotta go. What about Pa? What are you worried about your Pa for? Well, we can't just leave him here. What you want, ain't it? Then get out of here. <coughs> Plague. Steve Polk and I. Roby, you see that them Cartwrights don't follow us. Come on, Dolly. Are you coming or not? Yeah, sure, she's going with you. You're just what she's always wanted, Dagan. Come on, Dolly! You know, your father was right. You're just no good, Dolly. That's right, Joe. I'm no good. At least not by your standards. And that's the way I like it. Ha, 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 ha. So long, you cartwrights. I 
I didn't do nothing. Dad? You're going to be all right, Trev. You had a close call. The money. Did you get it back? They didn't have a chance to spend a single penny of it. You needn't worry about Dagan's boys, neither. They're all locked up tight in a jug down your jailhouse. That is what's left of them. Trev, would you like to know about Dolly? You know, she's been right here by your side since the boys brought you in. Running off with a man like Dagan. Why'd she have to do that, Ben? Well, maybe it's because she thought you, you didn't care. You think it was only the money in the bank robbers I was worried about? When I found out Dolly was gone, then you don't know what it's like trying to raise a girl. No, I, I guess I don't. But I do know what it's like trying to raise three sons. And sometimes you, you have to show them a little affection and understanding. You ever try that with Dolly? No. Your father's asking for you. Dolly, be patient with him. He needs you very much. As for you, young man, next time you visit Dolly Kincaid, ask your father's permission first. Have an idea, he'll give it to you. Now, but don't wait too long, uh, because at the rate that young lady's growing up, I might just ask permission myself. Hey, wait a minute, older brother. Don't you think we got troubles enough in this outfit with one lady's man? Well, how did you ever get mixed up in this family? I'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't run away now. Albie isn't gonna hurt you. You're real pretty. Albie! Well, hello there, little Joe. Well, leave her alone, Albie. You're scared her. Now, what are you doing up here on the mountain? It's on my way to Placerville. Come on, Albie, you're hurting her. Oh, I'm the only friend she's got up here, ain't I, Annie? At least why she don't give me no back talk like the other women. She's not an animal in one of your traps. Now let her go. I ain't hurting her. I'm just saying hello. Oh, you better not hurt her. Not ever. You don't belong up here. This ain't your country. Best you mind your own business. You bother Annie, I'll make it my business. This is my country, and I'm going to see it stays that way.
not. Stop working so hard, Sam. You got company. Huh. Sorry, little Joe. I got a touch of fever. Figured this might sweat it out of me. Uh, feeling any better? Hey, I brought you that gun barrel Pa said you needed. And I got a little present for Annie. <laughs> Waste of time bringing her anything. Just leave her be. Hey, Sam, look. Just pretend that she's a tree. Foolishness. Can't hear, can't talk. Don't understand no more than them dumb beasts she tends. No use bringing her presents, little Joe. Ah, uh, come on, Sam. Anybody understands getting a present. Suit yourself. Getting on towards dinner, you're welcome to share it, such as it is. Thank you. Hey, look, I, uh, I brought you a little present. Here, wait a second, let me get it. I thought, I thought I'd bring it as long as I was coming. It's not much. Well, come on, it's not gonna bite you. Well, come on, take it, it's for you. Here, wait a sec. Here. It's not much, it's just, just a rag doll. Don't worry, I'm not going to take it back. Oh, you, you... You go right ahead and enjoy it. So long. Uh, I'll, I'll see you... It's good talking to you, little Joe. Man gets out of the habit with nobody around to listen. Why do you stay up here, Sam? It's best. Well, maybe it's best for you, but what about Annie? Must be something terrible wrong with a man. To father a child like her. Killed her ma, bringing her into the world. I reckon it ain't too much punishment for me to raise her. It was just an accident the way she was born. It's not your fault. No, no. I won't hear no more about her. Not from you, and nobody. Okay, Sam. I'll help you move the rest of those sheep before I start out for Placid. I knew a couple dozen sheep could be so ornery. Almost as bad as people. You know, that's funny. You know, I've been talking to you all day, and I know you can't hear a word I'm saying. <laughs> hey, what are you looking at now? Hey, that's what I call a right pretty girl. Hey, look over here. Look that fellow right there, that's that handsome Joe Cartwright. It's the guy that's always watching me when I'm shaving. I just can't seem to get rid of him. <laughs> All right, what are you trying to fool me with now? Step behind your back. Hey, that, that's real beautiful. Sure is pretty. I guess you don't need to know how to talk to say everything. Thanks. I, 
I, I wish I could make you understand. Hey, look. Look, I'm, I'm trying to tell you I like it. Thank you. Preacher. Albie. It's good to see you again. Thank you, Albie. You been walking in the way of the Lord? Well, I've, I've been doing a lot of walking. Uh, it seems you were up here near spring the last time you came by here. Yeah, I guess it was. You dropping in on Sam, too? Well, you don't think I'd be swapping tales and telling news of that Annie? She's a child of God's son, for all the way he made her. Right, and that's a fact, Preacher. How about you? About time you married and raised a family, isn't it? Plenty of unmarried girls in town. Town girl once said I had the smell of a trapper on me. It's like meat that's not cured right. You'll find the right girl soon enough. Come on now. The word of the law will calm your mind and your soul. For thou writest bitter things against me, and will consume me for the sins of my youth. Amen. I'm paying for my sins, preacher. Paying. You, Sam? That why you always getting them children fever? Every man is tempted by the devil, Albie. No, Albie. Hearing the word of God is man's only salvation. True, preacher, true. If I could only read the Lord's word, I could bear up under his suffering. Uh, even if you could read, Sam, who would you read it to? Getting cramped sitting all this time. Think I'll go out for a while. Man born of woman living a short life is filled with many miseries. Who will make him clean that is conceived of unclean seed? You ain't got much that's better, have you? Huh? No matter what you are, you sure are pretty. Look, you must get lonesome, too. Look, I'm trying, just trying to be nice to you, that's all. Come on. Come on. I've been trapping for over a week. Man likes a woman to be waiting when he gets back. Come on. Come on. What are you, some sort of stick of wood or something? Come on. You can't hear, you can't talk. Haven't you got any feelings? Yeah, that's not so bad now, is it, huh? Allie, where are you? You in there in that shed? Come on, preacher. I'm not finished with you yet. I'll be back.
What are you doing in that shed, uh, Albie? Where well, I'm just helping Sam catch up with his chores, preacher. Oh, that's good of you, Albie. Sam's got a lot of fever. Be a good idea if you stop around whenever you can. Oh, don't worry, preacher. I'm going to be around a lot more now. Good. doing here, girl? You should be out with the sheep. What are you hiding? Out with it, girl. I've warned you. Never touch me money pouch. Corrupted by your present. You've done an evil thing. Must be punished. At least if you can't hear, I know you can feel. I take no joy in hurting you. I'm your father. It's my duty to teach you right and wrong as best I can. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Look at me with them sad eyes. I can't stand to see suffering written on your face and not a word coming from your tongue, not even sobbing. Put it back so you'll remember. Never do it again. Come on! Wait, it's really for you anyway, eh? Huh? Well, you see what it is. See, I got to talking to this doctor in, in Placerville, and I told him all about you, and he gave me this. Here, here, take it. Hey, Sam! Sam! It's a, it's a book of sign language, and, and you, you can learn to talk once you, once you understand these signs. It's not hard, either, because I learned a whole bunch of them on the way out here. I assure you, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Come on. Come on. Now, listen. You can learn to talk and to hear, just like other people, only with these with your hands. Well, let me see how I'm gonna do this. First page. Now, now look. A flower. See the picture? A flower, just like the picture. A flower, you see? Flower. This is the sign. Flower. Now you do it. 
All right, watch me once more. Flower. Just like you're smelling a real nice flower. What's the matter? Look, there's, there's nothing in my hand. I'm not trying to fool you. Forget that. We're gonna go to another one. Girl. You. Girl. Girl, because your cheek's real, real nice and soft. Give me your hand. Just like that. Girl. G wow. Boy. Boy. Just, just like tipping my hat. A boy. I could tip, tip my hat. You don't understand, do you? It's gonna be a lot tougher than I thought. Please, I can't make it any plainer. I don't know why you can't understand it. That's it! That's it! What's this for? Oh, Annie. Look, this isn't some kind of a game. I'm doing my best to, to teach you this sign language. Look, I want you to be able to talk and to understand people when they talk to you. Can't you see that? Well, I guess you never will. You couldn't hear that. Why, of course. Of course you feel it. Here. Here, you feel that? That's what talking is. Feel it. Here. Feel it. Feel the ground. Look, you can talk like that. Look. See that? I'm talking to you with my hands. That's it. That's it. You understand. You do understand. Girl, boy, boy, tipping your hat, a beautiful flower. There isn't a person who can talk or hear that can ever understand the way you feel. I'm so happy. to tell me that there's any hope when I've lived my whole life with the weight of a pressing on me heart like a stone. Now, will you watch, Sam? You see for yourself. Now, you are going to talk to your father. Understand? Boy. Girl. Flower. Book. That ain't talking. That's just like Indian sign. That's right. That's right, only better. You're a fool, little Joe. She's just waving her arms around. How do you know she understands what she's doing? See for yourself she understands. All right. You know what them signs mean, do you? You, girl. He, boy. What am I? What?
What am I? What am I? What am I? I'm scaring her, Sam. I tell you, she does understand. No! 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 She's not an animal, Sam. Help her. Bring her to town if you don't believe me. Let the doctor see her. No doctor can give that poor girl what she was robbed of at birth. She'll never change. She can learn to understand, but not if you don't help her, not if you don't give her a chance. Sam. Look at her, she's talking to you with her hands. She's telling you she went out into the rain and got the book. Now do you believe me? She's not one of your sheep, Sam. She's your daughter. I'll save the doc, Sam. Coot, who lives up in the mountains? Yeah, Sam Croft. He only comes down about twice a year. You know, I, I thought he lived by himself. <laughs> he, he's been holding out on us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get a pretty little thing like her, huh? You been holding out on us, Sam? Uh, what do you want, Tom? Well, you went out and got yourself a little company, huh? She's, she's my daughter. Who are you trying to fool? Leave us alone. Has old Sam been treating you right? Hmm? Well, what do you say? I'm talking to you. She... She don't talk much to strangers. Well, now, how come? Is she too good for fellows like us? Huh? Yeah, let me get a good look at her. No, no, don't give, give me that. <laughs> you want it, Sam? Well, you gotta come and take it. Oh, no, no, please, leave us alone. We ain't doing you no harm. Now, Sam, if the girl wants a bonnet, let her ask for it. Real pretty like, huh? Now, I bet I can make you talk to us. Now, leave her alone. No, leave her alone. Oh, oh there, man. Oh, where you going? Going? Leave her alone. Only that old mountain goat, Sam Croft. Get out of here. Come on, Pappy. <laughs> he ain't worth shooting. Oh, we just having a little fun. You both all right? We ain't hurt. 
Good. Come on, Sam. The doctor's in. Oh, we ain't going to no doctor. We shouldn't have come here in the first place. Shouldn't have listened to you. What's the matter? What are you talking about? We belong in the mountains. Me and the girl both. We ain't fit for no town. And the town ain't fit for us. Sam, for once, think of what's right for Anne. That's who I'm thinking of. Now get out of my way. <laughs> How's it coming along, son? You know, you've been spending much more time up at the Crofts these past few months than here. Why, I just wouldn't believe it. Why, Anne's learned so much already. We can carry on a regular conversation. Uh, how's Sam Croft? Still as stubborn about it as ever? Uh, that man's impossible. He told me he'd never let us see the doctor, not ever. I sure hope I can get him to change his mind. Joe. You don't think you're, uh, over your head? Uh, what do you mean? Well, sometimes it's best not to, you know, push people too hard. Leave well enough alone. Now, why should I leave him alone? He's not going to help her. Somebody has to. No, no. Sometimes helping looks like meddling. Don't worry, Pa. I know the difference. Joe, take care of yourself up there. Sure I will, Pa. Sam! Sam, you in there? Awful lonely out in the traps. What's that, a new kind of game, huh? You want me to play a little game with you, huh? Gotcha. Old Albie's missed you a lot, but he's gonna make it all up to you. Oh, now, Sam, there no need to bring a gun up on me. Away from her. And keep away. I don't see you running Joe Cartwright off of here, or maybe you think he's a better man than I. Joe Cartwright's teaching her to talk. I'll bet you he's teaching her to talk. Move, or I'll blow your head off. All right. All right, Sam. Just remember, with all that money and all them girls in town, Joe Cartwright ain't interested in marrying anyone like Annie. <laughs> all right. This is the last one for today. This is gonna be a tough one. Love. Love. Your father helps you. Your father gives you food. You live in your father's house. You love your father. Your father loves you. Uh, you see, I could say, uh, you love flowers, and you'd know that it was good. I teach you to talk, yeah. No, 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 you, that's wrong. See, you don't love me. Now, that is wrong. You don't love me.
look, you don't love me. You don't love me and I don't love you. All of a sudden, for no reason, she, she tried to kiss me. She tried to kiss you? Well, she did kiss me, as a matter of fact. I guess she got upset and she ran away. I should have been watching you all along. You should have been watching me. You should have been watching me. You should have been helping me teach her and... Instead of being so stubborn. Teaching our what? Kissing? All kinds of sin? You keep away from her. All right, Sam. All right, I'll keep away from her. You're her father. You tried teaching her for a change. Sam, I'm looking for Ann. I told you I didn't like a gun thrown on me. How's it feel? Where's Ann? Have you got a... No, I ain't got a, but I will have after you meet with an accident. You see, Sam, I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to take care of Annie after you die in an accident. Just walked out. Well, what was I supposed to do? She completely misunderstood. Oh, and then her father. I go in and I try to explain it to him, and he starts like starts accusing me of all kinds of things. It's really funny. He doesn't try to help her himself. If you insisted on starting this, you can't walk out before you finish it. I understand that. I'm not a little kid. Aren't you? If you understand it and still walk out, then you're just a little kid. Now wait a minute. Don't you raise your voice to me, boy. And don't you call me a little kid. Joe, you opened a door to the world for this girl. You let her look out for the first time. Now, her gratitude for you must be overwhelming, to say the least. All right, fine. Fine. All I was trying to do was help her. You can't shove someone into the water and then not wait around to see if they can swim. She has a father. No. You started it. You were the one who tampered with those two lives, and you can't abandon them now. Well, what do you want me to do, marry her? Help me, Pa. I don't know what to do. Go back. No, I can't. 
I can't go back there and hurt her anymore. You must make her understand that what she feels for you is gratitude, not love. Oh, she'll be hurt a little bit, but she'll get over it. If you don't go back, she'll remain hurt forever. I think I'll go for a ride. here, hidden, ashamed of my own flesh and blood. Forgive me, daughter, if you can. I love you, Anne. I always did. back sooner or later. You still playing games with me? I'm gonna teach you more than Joe Cartwright ever did. You worried about your pa. Your pa ain't coming back. You're gonna stay with me. All right, now, look, now. Just take it easy. You be nice to Albie, and Albie's gonna be nice to you. I'll even buy you a new dress. happened your father hurt needs help where he fell stay out of this card right you do this to her Albie. what's she trying to tell you what happened to sam what are you talking about annie says sam's been hurt now don't fool with me you know she can't talk can't she, Albie?
What did the doctor say? Well, he said he'd be all right, but he'll need a lot of care. Did you, uh, have you spoken to her yet about? Yeah. Good. You better tell her her father will be all right. Yeah, right. Father, be all right. Doctor says your father will be all right. What? What'd she say? She said she'd help you and take care of you. She says she loves you very much. Joe. Yeah. What's the sign for daughter? Easy. We still got quite a ways to go before we get to the ranch house, man. I have never seen anything as beautiful as all this in my whole life. Yeah. The Ponderosa's really something, all right. All this is a Ponderosa? It sure is. Biggest spread this side the Sacramento Valley. Folks around here claim it could be biggest west of St. Luke. And it all belongs to Ben Cartwright. It sure does. Ben and the boys raise more cows and sell more timber than anyone else in the territory. You know, I've heard so much about that beautiful house he built up here in the mountains. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> this is it, ma'am. You can unload my luggage here, please, and, and very carefully. Thank you. I expect when you get ready to leave here, Ben Cartwright will tend to it himself. No more need for me. Oh, I'm sure I'm in good hands now. Yes, sir. And I thank you. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very kindly. Excuse me. Give me crack corn and I don't care. Give me crack corn and I don't care. Oh, fine horse, isn't it? Oh, yes, sir. He's purebred stock. We imported him all the way from Kentucky. Kentucky? Well, that is a long way, isn't it? You must be the one they call horse. Oh, no, ma'am. Not not horse. Not H-O-R-S-E. Just plain horse. H-O-S-S. Well, horse, when you're finished here, would you please take my luggage inside? Ma'am, you... Are you sure you got the right place? Oh, this is the Ponderosa, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Well, then I've come to the right place. Oh, you know, I would have known you anywhere. 
You're exactly as Ben described you. Ben, ma'am? Yes, Ben. I'm Mrs. Cartwright. I'm Mrs. Ben Cartwright. would get married and send the bride back here by herself. Now, there's something wrong. And what did you have to put her up here for? Adam, now, what the heck do you expect me to do? Tired of the hitching rail out there and leave her? Well, you could have come after me. Now, how am I going to do that? You and Joe were both up in the flats Italian. Come on, Adam, settle down. You know, there's nothing else he could do. Besides, what's the harm? When Pa comes back, he'll clear the whole thing up one way or the other. Dad, burn it. Joe, don't this beat all. Hey, come, come on. What, what's she like? Oh, wait till you see her. She is really something. Hmm. Hey, sounds like quite a woman, Adam. Not interested in what she looks like. I'm interested in finding out what this is all about. Oh, you think it's so impossible that our pa could get married? I think it's impossible that he'd do it this way, yes. If either one of you had any sense, you'd see it that way. Gentlemen, may I join you? Uh... I, I'm Joe Cartwright. Well, how do you do, Joe? Ma'am, this, this is our older brother, Adam. Adam. Uh, how do you do? Your father told me you'd be surprised, but I hope that isn't disappointment I see on your face. Ma'am, it, it takes our, our brother Adam a little longer to get used to things. Have you uh, known my father long, Miss? Not uh... Miss Adam, Mrs. Mrs. Jennifer Cartwright. And no, I only knew your father a few days, but, well, it seemed like a long time. It seemed like I'd known your father all my life. Well, now, isn't it a little unusual to marry a man you've only known for a few days? It's unusual, but not impossible. Not for us. Ain't that romantic, Joe? If, uh, you, you'll excuse me for saying so, ma'am. Looking at you, I can see how that might happen. Well, thank you, little Joe. You know, I appreciate your saying that, even though Ben did tell me you were the flatterer of the group. <laughs> uh, miss, I'd like to know where my father is and uh, why he didn't come back with you. He still had some more cattle to buy, and after all, a trip like that's no place for a honeymoon. That's just like Paul. <laughs> but he didn't start out to buy stock. No, and he didn't start out to get married either, but he did. Oh, look, I, I know this has been a big surprise to you, but... When your father gets home, he'll explain it all. Uh, that's right, Adam. Hey, look, why don't we, uh, why don't we have a drink, celebrate? I'll get it. Okay. Thank you. Here's to the card rights. The Hoss, little Joe, Adam, Ben, and Jennifer. <laughs> I just don't understand it. Now, he had no intention of getting married. And even if he did, he wouldn't do it this way. He wouldn't do it without telling us. She's gonna hear every word you're saying. I don't care what she hears. Oh, come on, Adam, calm down, will you? She hasn't done anything to you. Besides, this isn't even any of our affair. Well, it's Pa's affair, and that makes it mine, and it should make it yours. Yeah, well, from what I see, I think marrying her'd be a good idea. He could have done a lot worse. Hey, anyway, we're gonna find out now. Welcome home. Thank you. Have a nice trip? Just fine, Hoss. Just fine. You, uh, buy any new breeding stock this trip, Pa? Breeding stock? Mm hmm. Well, with the Carsons, you see, the railway people are about selling some timber for that new line they're planning up north. You know that. 
Uh, Paul, you didn't meet nobody new or nothing? Well, let's stop beating around the bush. Did you get married? Did I what? <laughs> There's a woman inside who claims she's Mrs. Ben Cartwright. Well, says I married her? Yes. It's a real good-looking woman, Pa. Oh, she is, huh? Well, uh, let's have a look at this good looker. <laughs> Are you joining me, boys? All right. Where is this uh, good-looking woman? Oh, she's, uh, she's upstairs, Pa. Oh, is she? Well, uh, I guess you'd better have her come down, eh? Yeah. Paul, I think she's asleep. She's kind of tired. No, I don't give a hoot. Just have her come down right this minute. This is Ben Cartwright. This is Mr. Ben Cartwright. Oh, all right, now, come on now, boys. Who is this lady? Is this some kind of a joke? Who is this? Well, ma'am, that's just what I was asking. Why are you doing this to me? Are you trying to confuse me? Is that it, Hoss? Are you hoping I'll say this is my Ben? No, ma'am. We, we wouldn't do nothing like that. This, this is our Paul, ma'am. This is Ben Cartwright. Little Joe. But this isn't the man I married. This isn't my Ben. I, I don't know who this man is. Ma'am, maybe you'd better tell me about this other Ben Cartwright. I met him in Crater Plain, and we were married there. He told me all about his sons, and he told me all about the Ponderosa. And when I got here, it was... it was exactly the way he said it would be. Ma'am, I'm afraid you've been taken in. Taken in? I loaned him $4,000. It was a legacy my parents left me. He, he said he was buying cattle for the Ponderosa. Well, ma'am, uh, what does he look like? Did he give you anything, anything by which he could be identified? No, I have nothing. I have nothing except a marriage license. Jennifer Lane, too. Ben Cartwright. Well, I guess it really isn't much good, is it? I'm sorry. Poor little gal. I sure do feel sorry for her. Somebody really took her for her $4,000. A lot of money. Said she got married in Crater Plain. Whereabouts that? It's that little mining town across the line in Utah territory, isn't it? Yeah. Man running around the country, using my name, swindling women. It'd be a good idea if we went over to this crater plane and look around. Well, I don't know about we, but I'm certainly going to. Well, what about Ms... That, that little gal? Yeah. She's the only one who could really identify the man. I suppose I'll have to take her with me. Oh, come on, Pa. That's a four-day ride. Can't make that trip alone with a woman. Yeah, no, Paul. That, that wouldn't look right at all. Maybe, maybe Joe ought to go along with us. Us? Well, who said anything about you going? Well, now, uh, Crater Plain is a tough mining camp, and uh, it's a long ride. I, I think it'd be better if we all went along. Now, just a minute now. Until you boys came into my life, I was perfectly able to take care of everything. I guess you're right, though. Look, let's have a good night's sleep, and we'll tell the lady what we've decided to do in the morning. Well, I'm all ready, Mr. Cartwright, but uh, 
Well, I do feel awfully guilty about getting you all involved like this. Oh, nonsense. We've already talked that out, and it's really a case of helping each other. Thank you very much. near as big as the whole state of Rhode Island, ain't it, Paul? Yeah, just about, I guess. It must be wonderful to live on a place like the Ponderosa. A place almost as big as an entire state. Well, Miss Jennifer, it's not what a man has that's important. It's how he got it and what he does with it that really counts. But how does one man get so much? By working till his back's near broke like our pa did. Other people work hard. Yeah, but maybe other folks don't dream like our pa did, Miss Jennifer. Uh, fight to keep it. Been traveling quite a piece? Yeah, from up near Tahoe, near the Nevada California line. Water up, boys. You don't say. I never been over there. No. Uh, heading for Crater Plain. I reckon that? Eh? Yeah. yeah. Lots of folks are nowadays. It's quite a little town. But mind you, watch your pocketbook. The gamblers are cleaning up more pay dirt than the miners. Well, thank you for the warning. Hey, is it much farther to uh, to Crater Plains? Uh, about eight miles as the crow flies. Thank you. Trouble is, you ain't riding crows. I say you ain't riding crows. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess we aren't. Oh, uh, is the trail barked? Good and plain. You won't have no trouble. Well, thank you very much for the water and for your kindness. Uh, and I'll remember what you said about the gamblers. You do that now. Thanks again for the water. Well, what are you doing around here? Doggies, I don't hardly recognize you without a card table between us. I ain't got any gold dust to lose, but I got a bottle in the shack. Might loosen up your tongue, reckon? Come on in. Good room. What am I going to do, Paul? Well, since we make arrangements for the horses, we'll go see the sheriff. You shouldn't come in here. What's the matter, Em? Every citizen has the right to bandy a word or two with the town clerk. I've done all I can for you. Leave me alone. I find now I can use your services. No. The last time was enough. No more. You leave me alone. Town clerk's here to serve the people. 
all the people. What do I have to do? You remember Ned Birch? Yeah. They're bringing his body into town. I think you ought to let his friends know. seen you around Crater Plain before. No, we just rode into town. People come looking for the sheriff. Ain't so plentiful around here. What's your name? Well, I'm Ben Cartwright. This is my son, Horse Cartwright. Howdy. Cartwright. Sheriff. Cartwright, eh? Yeah, Ben Cartwright. And that's why I'm here, Sheriff. And that's why you're going to stay here. Ben Cartwright, I'm arresting you for murder. Murder? What, what are you talking about? They just found that on the body of that dead miner out there you shot in the back. Well, Sheriff, this is why I wanted to talk to you. See, there's another Ben Cartwright pawing the man you're after, Sheriff. You look like a nice boy. Why confuse things? You stay out of it, huh? I'm looking for a Ben Cartwright. You say you're Ben Cartwright. That'll do for a start. Now, just one minute, Sheriff. I came here to clear my name. Yes, I'm Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa, Nevada Territory. But some crook is running around these parts using the name of Ben Cartwright. Switch. Now, you wait just a minute. I'll hear your story in there. Oh, let's go get Jennifer. She'll clear this thing up. Just Please. a minute. She's the one that was swindled by that crook. That's a little rich for you, ain't it, Ed? Well, I just came into some money. I expect that's my business. Oh, makes no never mind around here. <laughs> some days you got it, some days you ain't. Uh, no need to fret about it. You uh, closed the town up mighty early today, didn't you, Ed? Yeah. Today ain't no ordinary day. Day is something special. Been just an ordinary day for me. What's so special about it? They found Ned Birch up at his shack. Dead. They just brought him in. Ned Birch dead? Why, he was in here just a couple days ago. Well, he won't be back in again. He was murdered. Shot right in the back. Oh, Hoss, is anything the matter? Oh, yes, sir. ma'am. They got our Paul locked up down here in jail. In jail? Well, what on earth did he do? All I know is we, we walked in there and, and Paul introduced himself to the sheriff as Ben Cartwright and, and the sheriff arrested him for murder. Murder? But that's impossible. Ma'am, we, we figured you could help us more than anybody else. You see, the sheriff has got Paul mixed up with the same man that stole your money. If you'd go down there and tell him what you told us, then he'd know he's got the wrong man locked up. Well, of course I'll go. I'll go right away. Thank you, ma'am. I'll go see if I can find Adam, little Joe. You just leave your father to me. He'll be in good hands. We're supposed to be helping you. Looks like things sort of got themselves turned around, don't it? Your father said we'd be helping each other. That's all I'm trying to do. Ma'am, I sure do thank you. We all do. If it hadn't been for me, you wouldn't be here and he wouldn't be in jail. I'm only doing what I can, but... I'm sure it'll be enough.
No need for you to worry about this. I'll take care of it. Yes, miss? Good afternoon, Sheriff. I, um, think I might be of some help to you. <laughs> Lord knows I need it. What about? I understand you have a Ben Cartwright in jail. Well, news travels faster than the plague about him. What kind of help do you figure I need? I also understand there's some confusion about two Ben Cartwrights. So he said. Well, I can identify the man you're looking for if I can get a look at him. I'm not interested in playing games, ma'am. This is no game, Sheriff. All right. Well. Sheriff, it's about time somebody talked some sense into you. Just yeah, simmer down, Cartwright. Let this young lady take a gander at you. Take all the time you want. Just you make sure. And just tell them the truth, Jennifer. That's all we need here, just the truth. I might say the law looks unkindly on anything else. He says he's the Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa, Nevada Territory. Ben. Ben, I begged you not to get into any more trouble. What? This is the man, Sheriff. What makes you think I'll take your word for it? Because I'm Mrs. Ben Cartwright. Jennifer! Now, Frank, what is this? I was just down at the jail and the sheriff told me they were charging Ben with murder. Honey. You don't believe everything you hear, do you? Oh, Frank. Jenny. Jenny, you know it's not true. Now, why worry your pretty little head about details? That's what I love the most about you. You're always worried about other people. stand here flat-footed and lie like that. Didn't sound much like lying to me. He sounded like a woman who married the wrong man. But why? Why would you want to do a thing like this to you? Yeah. There's got to be more to this. Yeah, but what? How are we going to find out? Oh, we're going to find out if we have to tear this whole town apart. Now, hold on. You boys stay out of trouble, you hear? And one cart right in here is already one of many. That sounds like pretty good sense to me. And if you want some friendly advice, boys, I'd play it pretty easy. Ned Birch had a lot of friends in this town. Pa, I promise you, we'll get to the bottom of this. Adam, find out everything you can, but stay out of trouble. You listen to your daddy, boys. None of you young Cartwrights are so big you can't end up right in here beside him. Keep that in mind. All right, time's up now. You're making the biggest mistake of your life, sir. Just doing my job, boy. He doesn't belong in there, Sheriff. I don't know why I don't listen to him. He's telling you the truth. I have listened to him, boy. I'm as good a listener as you're going to find in this town. I have been for years. Yeah, but you don't know the truth when somebody tells it to you. Take it easy, Joe. Now, listen, boy. I keep hearing about two Ben Cartwrights and a wife who ain't a wife. I admit we get a John Smith through here two, maybe three times a month. A few Barts, a couple of Reds, a couple of Blackies. But Ben Cartwright just ain't John Smith. You know what I mean? just ain't so easy to believe. Yeah, but you believe that woman when she says she's my pa's wife and she isn't. I don't see you making any effort to find out about her. Boy! Don't tell me how to do my job. Oh, come on in, Ab. You sent for me, Sheriff? If, if, if you're busy, I, I can come back. No, no, no. Just busy waiting for you, Ab. Stick around, boys. This might interest you. Unless it has something to do with our pa. Stick around. You've been reciting many words from the book lately, Ed. Yeah? Went? <laughs> this town ain't much for getting married, Sheriff. You know that. <laughs> Folks are too busy for that sort of thing. 
And you'd remember if you hitched anyone lately, wouldn't you? Well, I, I don't know, Sheriff. I, I've been a little peaked with the misery lately. My memory, it, it might not be what it should. You, you look a little peaked to me right now. Are you uh, some kind of minister? Minister? I'm the city clerk. See what I mean, boy? Just trying to do my job. Have a look at this, Ed. It's your writing, ain't it? Well, uh, yes, yes, I expect that is. You remember the man, Ed? Remember this Ben Cartwright? Well, uh, maybe if I, if, if I saw him. Well, let's have a look. The man wears his best duds to his wedding. If, if I could see him and... Is that the man like it says in this paper? Yes or no? That's him. Sheriff! That's the man. <laughs> you better get to talking, Buster, and telling the truth, or I'm going to squeeze you real tight. Let him go! I've been a patient man. I've been patient, hoping you'd come up with something. But my patience is over now. Boys, you better go. All right, are we going to give up that easy? Of course we ain't. Then let's go back in there and blast them out. No, now, wait a minute. You two find a place to light. Try the saloon. I'll meet you there later. What are you figuring on doing, Adam? I'm going to have a talk with that lady. Sheriff. Sheriff! You said I'd have a chance to talk. I figure you've had it. Well, I didn't want to say anything when the boys were here. They're hot-tempered, but well, I have my rights. Sure you have, like everybody else. Well, then will you please pay a little attention to what I have to say? Now, that man that was just here. He's lying. And the woman that was here before, she's lying. She's not my wife. She said she was. Sheriff! Now, hang on, old man. Why can't you send somebody to Virginia City? There are a hundred people there who can identify me. Virginia City? Take the better part of a week round trip. I've got the time, but I don't know about the town. They might have different ideas. <laughs> Did you lie about my father? I don't know what you mean. My father's oh. life is threatened now. I want the answers to some questions. You're hurting my arm. I'll break it. Now, what's it all about? Oh, Start talking. Get your hands off her, Cartwright. You're pretty good at threatening a lady. What lady? Get his gun, Jennifer. What are you doing? Get out of the way. Frank, you can't do this. I won't let you. Get out of the way. No, Frank. Cartwright, you get out of here. Get out of here! Please, Frank. Look, Jenny, we're in this thing for money, $10,000. But how far do we have to go? Look, Frank, I got Ben here. I got him in jail. I even got his sons to All come... All right. All right. You've done real fine. I'm not complaining, Frank. I never have. I've always done exactly as you told me to, even when I didn't want it. But when you had that gun in your hand, it scared me. Frank, it's not like you. It's not like us. I got excited. Maybe I was even a little scared. All I've ever really wanted was you. 
Oh, Frank, please. Why can't we just take the money and get out of here? No, we can't do that, Jenny. Not just yet. But why can't we? That was the plan. Jenny, are you going to be satisfied with $10,000? Isn't that enough? Is it? After you've seen the Ponderosa? Frank. We can have it all. The big house, everything that's in it. All of those thousands of acres of land. It's just that I want so much for you. There now. You're not afraid, are you? No. No, not when you hold me like this. It's just that I don't want you to kill. I'd do anything in the world for you, but but not murder. Once you murder, there's no way back. You know that, don't you? That's right, Shani. Once you murder, there's no way back. You gotta go all the way. How'd you do? You see Jennifer? Why don't you give me a gun? What happened to yours? That Jennifer of yours. She had a man hidden in her room waiting for me with a gun. That's our man. Let's go get him. Now, it's my gun he took. I'll handle it. No, wait a minute, Adam. We can't do it this way. You know what Paul said about staying in the boundaries of the law. So what good's the law going to do us? That sheriff will believe any lies anybody will tell him. Joe's right. Now, give me your gun. Look, we're going to get any information. We're going to get it together. All right. Let's go. You are them Cartwrights, ain't you? We've never denied our name. Well, we want you out of town. We're not leaving here as long as our pa's in that jail. And we say you are. That man you Paul killed, Ned Birch, he was a good friend of ours. Our Paul never killed him. You say that. And we think different. Ned Birch never hurt nobody in his whole life. We don't take to him being shot in the back. Real friendly people they got in this town. Call it! All right, everybody over on that side. Away from the door. Come on, move! Move it right around, boys. Be real good, nobody get hurt. Come on, keep moving! Move it all around, boys. Move it all around. <laughs> Hold it. Stay right where you are, everybody. You wouldn't want me to turn loose a load of double lot buck, would you? Now, if I was you, I'd put them things away. It might turn into something pure illegal. And if there's one thing I hold to, boys, it's doing everything all neat and legal. Yeah, like hanging an innocent man, huh? No, not if he can prove himself innocent. Boys, you all know I don't hold with this kind of doings. Then run him out of town, Sheriff. Well, there's gonna be plenty of trouble. Ned Birch had a lot of friends. There's talk of stringing up all these cartwrights. We don't like the idea of them running around loose packing guns. I reckon I can take care of that. Now, are you gonna do it my way or you wanna try it your way? Your way as I see it, you run them out of town. They lay out behind rocks with rifles and pick you off one by one if they have a mind to. And maybe they would have. Might be they take after their daddy. And your daddy told you to stay out of trouble. Well, you gonna let me handle this? What do you aim to do, Mike? Put these cartwrights where they'll be safe. Like I say, I like everything all neat and legal. I don't want a bunch of wild killings. Your guns, boys. All right, cartwrights. I'm gonna lock you up. You're all good. Oh, excuse me, Sheriff. You take your choice, Sheriff. It's two of us or one of him. If you got any liking for that brother of yours, you better start hoping he comes in of his own free will. I ain't going to be responsible for what happens to him when this town gets liquored up tonight. Not if he's outside my jail, I ain't. Get in there! Oh, no, 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 no,
Mueller stand by and let strangers ride through and kill off our friends? No. Are we going to forget about our pal Ned Birch? No. No. Ain't hey, none of us safe as long as the Cartwright's alive. this, Frank. The whole town's getting stirred up. It's not the town I'm worried about. If it hadn't been for you, that Cartwright wouldn't still be on the loose. Frank, who turned you into a killer? I don't know what you're talking about. Can you do this? this. No. I only wanted him to do some talking. Well, he won't talk now, Mr. Cartwright. Whatever it was you wanted him to say, he won't talk now because you killed him. And I hope you and your father both hang. You loved him that much, did you? Yes, I loved him that much. Enough to want to steal the Ponderosa, bad enough to want to kill for it? Kill for it? No, I didn't want killing. Now, somebody killed that miner. And my father's going to die for it unless you put a stop to it. All I know was I was supposed to pretend to be Mrs. Ben Cartwright, and, and then Frank and I were going to go away together. And then who was going to take over? I don't know. I... It's what I was trying to find out. Tell me who it was. But I don't know. I swear I don't. Stop lying, will you? But I'm not lying. Why should I with Frank gone? You lied about being married to my father. But Frank asked me to. And I always did what Frank asked me to. I'm asking you now. Will you go down there and tell the sheriff that you're not Mrs. Ben Cartwright? I don't know. 
please. I, I just don't know. How do we know it was Ben Cartwright that shot our pal Ned Birch? Huh? How do we know it wasn't one of them other Cartwrights that did it? All them Cartwrights could have the same cloth, you ask me. There's one way to make sure, and that's hang a bunch of them. Yeah! Hey, 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 hey. Dirty sound, that. Some men hear it only once in their life. Well, what are you going to do about it? I'm going out there and try to stop it. That's my job. I like things clean and legal. Of course, only so much one man can do. Well, you, you can at least give us a chance to protect ourselves. Give us some guns. <laughs> I wouldn't likely do that, would I, Cartwright? You might decide to shoot me in the back. You've already proved you're good at back shooting. That's what that mob out there is so all fired and stirred up about. He don't care, Bob. He don't care what happens to us. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what he said. I said go get him and drag him out. They deserve no more of a chance than they gave our pal Ned Birch. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. This girl has something to tell you. Get in there with your brother's Cartwright. Sheriff, Frank's dead. And I lied about being Mrs. Cartwright. Frank told me to. Maybe you ain't his wife, Jennifer. But only you and me knows it. I know it, Sheriff. That mom's coming for Cartwright, not for me. Oh, no. 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 No, you can't do this. You don't want the Cartwrights. They're innocent. I'm telling you the Cartwrights are innocent. They didn't have anything to do with this. No, please, listen to me. You can't do this. I lied. Why'd you try it? Ponderosa, pretty big spread. I wanted a place like that all my life. Not much chance for the sheriff's salary. I figured you Cartwright's dead. Only the widow. I would work real fine. To place of ours is so beautiful. Every time I see it, it's as though I'm seeing it for the first time. Well, you came pretty close to seeing it for the last time, Pa. She was sort of pretty, wasn't she? Mm -hmm. Pa, in the future, if you ever do decide to get married and uh, send the bride home by herself, uh, just do us one favor, will you? What? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Claims that have the X's on them belong to us, Mr. Harrison. That is correct, Mr. Harrison. Uh, we've gotten control of all the silver claims in the area, uh, but this one. What? Where? Why haven't we got that one, too? The claim belongs to a stubborn Irishman by the name of Tim O'Brien. Holmes has been unable to get him to sell or negotiate in any manner whatsoever. Won't negotiate. Negotiation is the backbone of our civilization. Force him to negotiate. 
I think I've got the answer, Chief. Item number one. Tim O'Brien has all his money deposited in the Virginia City branch of our bank. And to the tune of nearly $100,000. Oh, the man's a fool. Item number two. About a month ago, he bought $10,000 worth of machinery from your mine equipment company. And we've seen to it that the bill has not yet been paid. Were you also farsighted enough to require his claim as collateral for the equipment? That is item number three. Close the doors of our Virginia City branch. Declare it insolvent. And demand immediate payment for the equipment. And when O'Brien can't pay, foreclose and take over his claim. Chief, we might have just one problem. I don't have problems. I give them. It's Ben Cartwright. He's a good friend of Tim O'Brien's. And he might cause a stink about this. Let him. It won't do any good. Ben Cartwright will have troubles of his own soon enough. What do you mean, sir? After we acquire Tim O'Brien's claim, can you guess what piece of Nevada real estate we're going after next? Not the... the Ponderosa. Precisely. The Ponderosa. I want it all. I want everything. a good-looking briefcase you got, Buck. Well, it ought to be. It's genuine kangaroo. Oh, well, you got your horses all saddled up, Paul. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, boys. Now, you know what my policy is. When Adam and I are away on business, I like to leave one of you two in charge. Yeah. I'm leaving you in charge, Joseph. What? Huh? Me? That's right. You'll be in charge of ranch operations and uh, make all the decisions just as I do. Wait a minute. You mean that I'm the boss? I'm the head man? <laughs> That's right. I'm giving you a blank check as far as the Ponderosa is concerned. Well, you know, I've been thinking there's a few changes we ought to make around here. Changes? Oh, well, not, not exactly changes, sir. Improvements. I mean, like, uh, well, cleaning the stable and uh, all those fence posts above the ravine, they, they need to be replaced. They're all full of dry rot, you know, things like that. All right. Oh, uh, Joseph, about those uh, improvements, nothing too drastic, huh? No, no. No, no, sir. No, nothing drastic. Now, listen, you, you and Adam, you go, have a good time, stay as long as you want. I'll take care of everything. Sure, you know what you're doing. Yes, I want Joseph to have the responsibility. You gotta learn that running a ranch as big as the Ponderosa isn't as easy as it seems. Yes, but you left him with a blank check. When we get back, we'll probably find the ranch has been traded off for a salted gold mine up in Alaska. Oh, now, stop worrying. He'll be so busy cleaning stables and repairing fences, he won't have time for anything else. <laughs> After you finish branding the new calves, I want you to whitewash the smokehouse. Whitewash the smokehouse? Joe, we got hired hands to do stuff like that. I got other plans for the hired hands. Boss, don't you remember what it was like when Pa left you to be boss? Yeah. What else you want me to do? If you finish with a whitewash, and I want you to build a new ramp up into the stable. And then... Wait a minute, Joe. Just one thing I gotta find out. What do you want me to be doing when I ain't busy? Oh, I'll, I'll think of something, boss. Oh, 
it's taking you so long. If you want to go in town with me, you're going to have to knock on it. Town? Mm-hmm. Come on, hurry up. Well, there's another brush there. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Hey. Hmm. That's good thinking. I'm gonna go down to the telegraph office for a while. What you gonna be doing down there? What? There, there's a fellow advertising. He's got a prize book for sale in Placerville. Okay. I'm gonna send him a telegram telling him I'm gonna buy it. It says here he wants a thousand dollars for that book. Yeah. Well, Pa left me a blank check, didn't he? Told me to make all decisions. Figure buying this bull's a decision. <laughs> Business, Frank. You know, now that I'm running the ranch, I've got a lot of business to take care of. You're running the ranch? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that reminds me. I want to send a telegram to Placerville, California, to a uh, Mr. Wait, wait, wait. We haven't strung any telegraph wires to Placerville yet. Now, the only way to get in touch with anyone there is you know, regular mail. No. Well, better get the letter written. Hey, 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 little Joe. Yeah. You ain't forgot how to send and receive Morse code, have you? Oh, no, I remember it. Uh, Chris and I gave up the idea of being a telegrapher. That's, uh... Kind of kid stuff compared to running one of the biggest spreads in Nevada. Hmm? What do you ask? Oh, nothing else. I was figuring on showing you something I got for the uh, the new rig. If you know, if you'd watch the key for a minute, but uh, I guess you wouldn't be much interested now. And a new rig? Yeah. Hey. Oh, you didn't get a sulky, did you? Better than that. I got my pa's old buggy. See, what I'm doing? I'm stripping it down. See, I'm, huh? I'm cutting it under. Yeah. And. I'm adding a stick seat. Oh, stick seat, eh? Hey, well, what about the springs? Oh, oversized, naturally. Yeah, good. You don't know the best part. I got myself a pair of, get this, panel boot Victoria lamps from Boston. Oh, panel boot Victoria, nice. Hey, you wanna see them? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Wait, watch the key for a minute. I'll go get them. Right. Wait a minute. To J.R. Huggins, manager, Harrison Branch Bank, Virginia City, Nevada. Declaring Virginia City Branch insolvent. Stop. You hereby ordered to close bank and forward all assets to Harrison Corporation. And John J. Harrison. Well, there it is, little Joe. What do you think of that, huh? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really great, Frank. Great. Uh, that's all you're going to say about it? Hey, look, have you seen my brother, Hoss? Uh, yeah, I saw him down in front of the bucket of blood. All right, thanks. Oh, hey, uh, any messages while I was away? No, no, Frank. None to speak of. Uh, you probably never even saw a panel boot Victoria lamp before. Shady deal. 
I remember Paul saying that old man Harrison was as crooked as a dog tying legs. As a matter of fact, I remember Paul's Paul saying the same thing about the old world. If telegram ever gets delivered, it'll bust this town wide open. It gets delivered. Millen town. Pretty face. What do you mean, Claire, gets delivered? I don't know if I'm delivered or not. I saw Tim O'Brien in a bucket of blood. Bank closes, he'll lose every cent he's got to his name. I heard Paul tell him not to put a penny in that Harrison bank. Yeah, you know Tim. He's so contrary, whatever Pa told him to do, he'd do the opposite. Let's go in and talk to him. Cedar Creek, Tim. Cedar Creek? Oh, for a minute, I thought she meant something more permanent. <laughs> now that he's back amongst the living, me spirit rolls for another drink. Right away. Joe, we're wasting our time. Come on, Tim, let's go sit down. Irish whiskey, the nectar of the gods, consumed by gentlemen in all the civilized capitals of the world. Tim, you got any money in the Harrison Branch Bank? Have I got money in the Harrison Bank? <laughs> Have I got money in the Harrison Bank? I don't think you lads realize that it's Tim O'Brien you're talking to. Here, have a look at that. That's my bank book. Ninety-eight thousand six hundred and forty-nine dollars. And eighty-two cents. Yeah, and eighty-two cents. Tim, Tim, see, Hoss and I were thinking it might be a good idea for you to take your money out of the Harrison Branch Bank and put it into another bank. Why? No special reason, Tim. Just thought it'd be a good idea. Take my money out of one bank and put it into another. Sure, that don't make sense at all. Have you boys been drinking? Well, if you haven't, you should be. Here, do justice to that. Put me back his turned. You know, using talking to him, Joe, he's a drunk. He can't hit the floor with his hat. Yeah. Sure, we pause here. You'd know what to do. Yeah, well, Pa ain't here, so it's up to us to do some thinking. Let's go on over to the bank, pussyfoot around, ask some questions. What sort of questions? You no, know, what kind of questions have to ask me? What kind of questions? Questions. Here, Tim. The idea of me taking me business away from a nice old man like Mr. Harrison. <laughs> Out of three branches, they pick this one to break. That proves it's crooked. If it wasn't the whole bank, it'd go busted, not just one branch. That murdered Joe. How, how did they get away with it? A um, crook like John J. Harrison gets away with it all the time. Listen, you keep a lookout out here. I'm going to talk to Mr. Huggins. Hey, keep a lookout for what? Would you just, just keep a look out? Mr. Finch, that young Cartwright boy, the must think we're running a general store. He actually wants me to take all the money out of the safe so he can see it. Well, Mr. Huggins, you're the manager. I'm just your assistant. But if I were you, I'd humor the boy. You would? Mm -hmm. Why? Who knows? Maybe Ben Cartwright sent the boy here to check on our financial structure. You may be right. Very well, Mr. Finch. Get everything out of the safe and bring it into the office. Yes, sir.
thousand dollars in cash and our securities. Now, let me get this straight. You said you had deposits totaling $150,000. Yes, in that neighborhood. Well, you only have $60,000 here. Well, I can see you don't know much about banks. Those bonds can be cashed at any Harrison Bank on demand for $100,000. Hmm. Well, then, gentlemen, I suggest you cash them before your depositors read this and want to withdraw their money. Close the bank? But that would mean I'd have to go back. What? Oh, nothing. I was just... Uh... All right, here's what we'll do. You cash the bonds, let the depositors draw out their money, then I'll deliver the telegram. Are you trying to tell me how to run this bank? No, but do you want to ruin a bunch of innocent depositors? Oh, no, 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 of course not. All right, me and my brother will ride to Placerville to the Harrison branch. We'll cash the bonds, bring the money back here to Virginia City. You want me to turn these bonds over to you and your brother? Do you think I'm out of my mind? Stoggins, come here. Gentlemen, I am trying to be reasonable. only the bonds. You're dead sure it was Little Joe and Horse Cartwright? Of course it was them. Oh, I know those boys well, Sheriff. It was them. No mistake about that. Mr. Johnson, you better get back to your window. Yes, sir. I just can't believe it. Yes, it came as quite a shock to us, too. I'd have sworn that those boys just couldn't do a thing like that. Well, and then Cartwright finds out that they're bank robbers, it'll... Well, it'll just break his heart. And our bank, too. You got any idea where they'd go to cash the bonds? Yes, they uh, might. Yes, yeah, I heard uh, young Cartwright say that they were heading south for the Mexican border. Mexican border, huh? I'll send telegrams to all the law enforcement officers within a radius of 100 miles to keep a lookout for them. I'll keep you advised. Mr. Finch, I was almost sure that Cartwright boy said he was going to Placerville. Exactly, Mr. Huggins. Do you think they'll have any trouble cashing the bonds there? Oh, no trouble at all. Our Placerville branch is equipped to handle the largest kind of transactions. Precisely. We're going to let the Cartwright brothers pull our chestnuts out of the fire. What do you mean, Finch? You know what I mean, Huggins. Mr. Finch, if you're suggesting what I think you're suggesting, Why not? Spoken in the true spirit of John J. Harrison. Now we've got the $60,000 cash, plus the $100,000 we are going to get from the Cartwright boys, which gives us a grand total of $160,000. $80,000 each. $80,000 each. Yes, a man to live handsomely on that in Switzerland. Switzerland. I think I would prefer the south of France. I've heard the women in France uh, by the way, Finch, you've met my wife, haven't you? Yes, once. Now I have one suggestion. We'll leave 10,000 of the money with Johnson for the teller's safe. That'll take care of the transactions for the next three days. 
The rest of the money we put in the big safe. The big safe? Why? That's what we tell Johnson. Very wise. You know, Mr. Finch, in time, you too could have risen to the post of branch manager. Thank you, Mr. Huggins. Frank, send this message. Now that can wait. You send this message to the peace officers of every town on this list. Joe and Huss. Now I knew it. Knew what? I knew something was wrong when he wasn't interested in my panel boot Victoria lamp. In your what? My Never name. mind, just send the message. Joe, you, you sure that's sure we're doing the right thing. My pa said I was boss and I make all the decisions, didn't he? Yeah, but you done had us robbing a bank and now it's destroying private property. I, I don't know whether Paul would consider that coming under the title of making decisions or not. Yeah, well, what if Mr. Huggins telegraphed the Harrison Bank in Sacramento? They sent a messenger to Placerville who'd get there before us and tell him not to cash the bonds. Come on, you better knock on it. Yeah. Oh. Well, what's the matter? The line just went dead. Must be a loose connection along the line somewhere. Oh, a pole might have fell. Now, what do you mean a pole might have fell? Yeah, last month over in Carson City, a bull tore one down. Bull? Bull. You send the message as soon as you can, you hear? That red Joe, my feet's as cold as a couple of bushel baskets of icicles. How come we didn't stop by the house and pick up some bedrolls? Hey, Joe. Hmm? What's the average time a man gets for, for bank robbery? 10, 15 years of hard labor. Yeah, you got nothing to worry about. Yeah? Lynch mob usually saves the government cost of a trial. of a joke. Hmm. Looks pretty official to me. No, not Joe and Hoss. They wouldn't do a thing like that. Let me see the sheriff. I don't believe it. I wouldn't believe it if there were 50 witnesses. I know my boys. They just wouldn't do a thing. I understand how you feel, but nonetheless, it's the truth and you just got to face it. It just isn't possible. My boy... How much are they supposed to have taken? 100,000. I'm just fixing to swear in a half a dozen deputies now and go after them. Well, there's no need to do that, uh, Roy. Uh, I'll bring the boys back. I'll, I'll see to it that everything they're, they're supposed to have taken is returned. Well, that's very nice of you, but the trouble is, this is not just a family affair. The boys have committed a crime. That means it's my job to go after them, not yours. Now, I'm asking... Roy. I'm asking this as a favor, Roy. I, I'll, I'll bring him back. All I need is a little time to do it in. Man, I can't. All right. I'll give you a little time, but to protect me, now, don't tell anybody. All right, Roy, thanks. Thanks. Hurt your hand? <clears throat> My head always itches when somebody's following me. I always claim that. Well, it's itching right now. 
Well, I don't think they could organize the posse this soon. Uh, sure your hair just doesn't need washing? I just washed it last month. Put cheap dip in the water? No. That explains it. So good, Mr. Huggins. Onward and upward, Mr. Finch. See you in Virginia City. Yeah, I just made the same mistake. Did you get the money? Oh, sure, I got it. That's what I went in there for, isn't it? Yeah, but $100,000, that's a lot of money. Ah, the bank manager knew Pa. Figured he's working on some kind of a big business deal. I didn't see any reason to tell him otherwise. Yeah, Joe, we ain't had since yesterday, and we got another cold night on the trail. How come we don't buy us a couple of blankets and hey. some beans or something? Yeah. Hey, well, you got any cash money on you? Oh, no, I ain't right on me, but I was thinking that maybe... Hoss, what do you think? It ain't honest. Yeah, but, Joe, we just be buying it. trail, Pa. That horse has a break in his shoe. That Joseph is getting lazy by the day. I told him on a week ago to replace that shoe in his horse. My dang feet nearly froze last night. I ain't, I ain't gonna let that happen again. brothers, I presume. Oh. Joe, we got us more troubles than a horse without a tail at fly time. How are you gonna explain all this to the sheriff? I ain't the sheriff I'm so much worried about as it is Pa. Dad, burn it every time I think about the brace game them two bank fellas playing on us makes me mad enough to bite myself. Well, better get on back to town. We got a lot of tall explaining to do. Yeah. We're gonna be just about as popular in town as a couple of wet dogs at a parlor social. Tell him. You're the boss. Well, you, you see, Pa, what, ha what happened is... Well, I think I'll get me some water. That's the most unbelievable cock and bull yarn I've ever heard. You steal the bonds from the bank because it's going broke, then you cash them, 
and then the bankers steal the money from you. Well, that's exactly what happened, Pa. It sure is, Pa. And then, then they stole the horses on top of that. Oh. Where's that telegram you got over the wire? Hey. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait a second. You, you got the telegram? I ain't got it. You got it, ain't you? Why? Well, I, I ain't exactly got it with me, Pa. You ain't exactly got it with you because it wasn't exactly sent. Oh, now listen! No! You listen. And you listen good. I don't know what you boys did with the money. But there's one thing I do know for sure. You're going to give yourselves up to the sheriff and stand trial for bank robbery. Understand? Adam, you and I will ride back to Virginia City and make arrangements to pay back every cent that these brothers of yours took. Uh, pa, where are you going to get a quick hundred thousand dollars? Sell the Ponderosa if I have to. Hey, Paul. How are we supposed to get back into Virginia City if we ain't got no horses? You'll walk. W w walk? And make sure you get there. You hear? Like you said, Pa, you really know little Joe. He'll be cleaning out the stable, paring the fences. Oh, come on. Like a bank run. Keep them out of here until I get my money. Your money? What about my money? Finnegan, don't be selfish. Give me my money is quick. Right away, Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller, did you remember to fill out your withdrawal slip in triplicate? Triplicate? What seems to be the trouble, Mr. Johnson? Bank run, Mr. Cartwright. That hundred thousand dollars your two boys stole has turned this town into a... All right, all right. Now, now, quiet down, folks. Please, quiet down. Now, just... I, now, look, your deposits are perfectly safe here. I, I promise you that. Who's going to make up the money your boys stole? Well, I will. A whole hundred thousand? Every cent. Now, you, you, can, you can take my word for that. Where are you going to get the money, Mr. Cartwright? Well, I'll, I'll get it, even, even if I have to sell the Ponderosa. And as you all know, the Ponderosa is worth well in excess of $100,000. Well, I'll go along with that, Mr. Cartwright. We all know what the Ponderosa means to you. You heard it, folks. Mr. Cartwright says we won't lose a penny. That's good enough for me. Come on, I'll buy the drinks with a bucket of blood. <laughs> I'll tell you, Mr. Cartwright, if you hadn't stopped them when you did, we'd have been plumb out of money. Where's Huggins? Oh, uh, Mr. Huggins, Mr. Finch, gone out away on a hunting trip. A hunting trip? Mm -hmm. The bank is robbed and the two men in charge go hunting? Well, they had vacation coming to. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got a vacation coming too. Three weeks and two days. Of course, I ain't had time recently to... Mr. Johnson, what exactly did my boy steal? Don't you know? I sure hate to be the one to tell you, Mr. Cartwright. It was $100,000 in bonds. Bonds? And they didn't take any cash? Mm, just the bonds. There was $60,000 in cash right there that they could just as easy take as not, but didn't touch that. Mr. Johnson, you can tell any of your depositors who asked that I'll have the money in the bank tomorrow. You have to believe him. Wait a minute, Dan. If what the boys told you is true... It uh... must be true. The fact that they didn't touch any of the bank's cash should prove that. Certainly all in their favor. I can't say as I've heard of any bank robbers passing up ready cash. Uh, Roy, doesn't it strike you as being pretty strange that the uh, manager and his assistant would go on a hunting trip the morning after their bank was robbed? Yeah. 
Well, it doesn't seem like the natural thing to do. Well, it seems to tie in with little Joe's story about the bankers having robbed them. Well, yeah. Now, mind you, mind you, Roy, I'm not saying that I approve of what the boys did, but it was certainly a, a great relief for me to learn that it, at least their motivations were honest. Ben, I don't want to jail little Joe and Hoss if it can possibly be avoided. Yeah. But I've got to remind you that bank robbing in this territory is still a crime. If anybody's committed a crime, it's that John J. Hatton, Harrison, and that confounded conspiracy of his to bank up his own bank. And I think you know it. Maybe I do. But who's going to convince the depositors? Well, I'm going to personally pay back every deposit, whether the bank closes or not. Then you could go broke doing it. I came here with nothing, and if I have to, I can start out all over again. <laughs> We're heading in the wrong direction. What are you talking about? This is the right way home. No, we ain't going home. We're going to get that money back. We're going after the crooks. On foot? Joe, the way I feel, I couldn't catch a turtle on foot. Yeah, well, we need some transportation. And if my eyes aren't as sore as my feet, I have two vacant mules I'm looking at. Hey, hey, Joe. Us. Yeah, we got no time to argue about ownership. No, not me. I didn't got enough against me already without having you stealing the left. You know, when it came time to explain to Pa, you said I was boss, didn't you? Well, didn't you? All right, then I'm still boss, and I'm telling you, get on that thing and ride it. And hurry up. Sure, we're doing the right thing. Well, I saw Colonel Duggan. He's willing to help. Oh, good. How much? $50,000. He'll meet you at the bank at 2 o'clock. It'll be a 10-year low-interest loan. Oh, he's a good friend. Well, I've been figuring out we should be able to get about $25,000 on the timber rights. Afternoon, Pa. Howdy, Paul. Done, Paul. We, we got our horses back. We got the money back, too, Paul. The money from the bank? Yeah. Is it the bank's money? Yeah. Well, how'd you get it? Huh? Wasn't easy. What happened to Huggins and Finch? Oh, they got away. Well, well not exactly. You see, Paul, there was a little, a little argument about that money. They didn't want to give it up. So there was a little pushing and shoving and a... Bring them two fellas sort of fell in the Truckee River, huh, Joe? Last time we saw them, they were floating on their way to Lake Tahoe. Yeah. Uh, this is the, uh, is the whole 100,000 here? No, that, that's 150,000. 150,000? Yeah, there, there's uh, the 100,000 they took from us. And then see that, that other little bag there? There's a Virginia City branch. Ah, that's got $50,000 in it. I reckon they robbed their own bank before they robbed us, Paul. Where'd you get the mules? <laughs> Oh, them mules. Oh. Tell them, Joe. Well, we, uh, we borrowed them. Sort of. You borrowed them? Oh, we, we had to get some transportation to go get that money, Pa. Yeah. Now, you two boys, I'm gonna take those mules. You're gonna find the owner of those mules. And you're going to pay the owner for renting them. Yeah. 
We, we haven't got any money, Father. Now, Adam and I are going to ride into Virginia City. We're going to put this money back to the bank. This afternoon, you two boys are going to ride into Virginia City. To the sheriff's office. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Paul. Take these to the bank. I'm going to see the sheriff. You going to press charges against Hoss and Joe? I'm going to press some charges. Uh, so, so we'd like we'd like to pay your rental fee for the mules. Say, uh, say ten dollars. We, we would have asked you before we took them, but it was sort of an emergency. Make it, make it fifteen dollars. Yeah. Uh, of course, of course, that's fifteen dollars for the rental of mules, and uh, and there's ten dollars more for the time you lost plowing. <laughs> Mister, you, uh, you tell us what what's it going to take to make you happy. Hi, Miller. Hi, Sheriff. Mr. Cartwright, the people of Virginia City, well, thank you. We ain't gonna forget what you've done. Well, I hope they forget what Horse and Little Joe done. And I'll have no advice from you, Mr. Ben Cartwright. Not as much as you'd put in the eye of a needle. This money goes up to my claim. To be buried in a tin can. There's too many different kinds of bank robbers around here to suit me. What is the meaning of this? Why hasn't this bank been closed as I ordered? This is no place for an honest man. Well? Well, uh, it's closed all right, Mr. Harrison. We're plumb out of money. Out of money? That's impossible. Well, uh, there is enough to cover three weeks and two days vacation. Vacation? Nobody who works for me ever gets a vacation. Fish, what is this fool blathering about? Mr. Harrison. What's that? Who are you? Oh, Ben Cartwright. Yes, Ben Cartwright. I can promise you, Mr. Harrison, that if you try to pull one more shady deal in Nevada Territory, I'll make a special trip to Washington and use all the influence at my command to have you investigated and jailed. And that's my department. And you heard what the man said. This bank is closed. Adam? Wait! You wait till I find out who's responsible for all this. Which reminds me, uh, Hoss and Joe should be back by now. I wonder where they are. I just hope they return those mules. I wouldn't want that charge hanging over their heads. <laughs> you be boss for a while. No, no, no. Little brother, I'm perfectly content just being a hired hand.
Gomez. I have had all of the stink that I can stand with this gringo. <laughs> you think you're through with me, Evie? When you are dancing in the air, I will be true with you. But you're not going to hang me. You're not that big. Not you or anybody else in this stinking town. <laughs> <laughs> Watch him. See, Cafe. Watch him well. He is full of tricks. Senor Carl Reagan is in jail. It will not be over until he is hanging by his neck. He'll be no loss. He brought nothing to this town but trouble. I could do. He grabbed my keys. He came toward me. I had to shoot. You did what you had to do. Now it is over. Except that I shall continue to curse the day that I first heard the name Carl Reagan. Good to see you, Will. What are you doing out this way? Well, I get a little homesick now and then, after all the years in the Ponderosa. Well, I still say you're the best dang foreman we ever had. Uh, watch it. Uh, there we are. There you are. Have you heard from Carl recently? As yeah, a matter of fact, I have been. At least I should think so. This come today. Must be from Carl. Can't think of nobody else who'd be writing to me. It is from Carl, ain't it, Ben? Ah, uh, let's see. It says uh, it's from uh, Plata, Mexico. Ah, uh -huh, sure is from him. I just knew it. Last word I heard from him, he was headed in that direction. You know, my eyesight may be failing me, but my instinct is still good. Uh, ben, do you mind reading it for me? No. Yeah. I could have had somebody in town read it, I reckon, but I knew you were just as anxious to hear it as I was. Yeah. Looks like somebody sent you a present here, Will. Well, I can wait for the present. Uh, what does Carl say? Well, it says that, uh... Well, go ahead, Ben, read it. It is from Carl, ain't it? Well, uh, we'll know. It's, uh... This isn't from Carl. It's some... some kind of advertisement, that's all. Oh. Well, if they send me a present, what is it? Um, it's a ring. It's like some uh, mail-order house is trying to sell some Indian jewelry. Adam just supposed it was. Ben, I've known you for a lot of years. You always was a poor-handed lion. What's in that letter? Well, I, I, I don't know how to break it to you. It's 
It's pretty bad news. About Carl? Yeah. About Carl. He's dead. Be sure of it. Be sure of it, Ben. Well, this is uh, it's from the authorities in Mexico. It's a certificate of death. How did it happen? What did it say? Well, that doesn't say. It just a certificate of death and the ring. It seems official. I'd know this ring any place. I hammered it out of silver with my own hands. Uh, 16th birthday. It was the same year as Mom died. Can they do this? Can they tell me that my boy has died and then not tell me how he died? Well, maybe there'll be a letter following, Mr. Reagan. That... What good would another letter do? I don't want my boy laying there in a foreign land. I want him back here where he belongs. Ben, you've got a wife buried in the Ponderosa. You know what I'm talking about. Well, I, of course, I know what you're talking about. But, well, it, it's impossible. I don't care whether it's impossible or not. I want my boy back here. I'm an old man. I ain't even got my eyesight. There ain't much left of me. I've got to have my boy back home. Well, you think I'm doing the right thing, Pop? I don't know. All I know is that I saw a man aged 10 years right before my eyes. Not because his son died, but because he doesn't know how he died. Well, if I can find out what happened, maybe I can bring his son back to him. And we owe Will Reagan at least that much. You know, Carl was a pretty wild kid. Suppose the truth's unpleasant. Can't back away from the truth, Adam. You take care of yourself. Right. Oh, boy. yesterday. Melt your whiskers off, it would have. Oh, could you give me maybe one of those nice outside rooms facing that cool ocean breeze? Oh, I had to get rid of all them rooms. The guests complained the sound of the waves kept them up all night. Where are you from? Virginia City, Nevada Territory. Adam Cartwright. Stay along? Depends. I'll show you to your room. Like I said, you should have been here yesterday. Melt your whiskers off. Here you are, a dollar a day, and breakfast in the morning. Yeah, this will be fine. You, uh, so you've been around this town some time, have you? That's right, some time. If you want to know a Gila monster by his first name, <laughs> ask me, I know him. As a matter of fact, I did want to ask about someone, a Carl Reagan. What about him? Uh, well, I'm an old friend of his from Virginia City, also a very good friend of his father's. We'd gotten word that Carl was dead. I don't know nothing about that. The dollar for the room is in advance. Oh, uh, that's a kind of a small town. Uh, surely you might have heard something about it, huh? Look, mister, you want your pillow fluffed up? Call me. And I forgot to tell you, the room is for one night. Trail gang's coming in tomorrow and I'll be full up. <laughs> Look, I was only trying to find out something about my friend's death. Why don't you go and ask his widow? Well, now, wait a minute, lady, you don't have... Senor. I'm looking for Mrs. Carl Reagan. I'm Mrs. Carl Reagan. Uh, my name's Adam Cartwright. I'm an, I'm an old friend of your husband's. I'm 
sorry that we have to meet under these circumstances, but I'd like to talk to you for a moment. My husband is dead. There is nothing we could talk about. Good day, senor. Mrs. Reagan. Mrs. Reagan, we meet again. You can hardly slam a door in my face here. May I buy you a drink? Please, senor, I'm busy. I told you I do not wish to talk. Now, I haven't very much to ask you. Shall we sit down? I'm not sure if Carl ever told you about his father, but I know him very well. He's quite anxious to learn as much as he can about Carl's death. Surely you can understand that, can't you? Oh, thank you. Now, may we have that drink? What do you want to know? Why didn't you write Carl's father? Why did you leave it for the law to do? I thought it was better that way. Why, was there something you were afraid to tell him? Please, senor, let things stay as they are. Go back to Virginia City. Go home, Mr. Cartwright. All right, Mrs. Reagan. I'll go home. After I get a few answers. Ah, senor. Come in, senor. You're in the wrong room, aren't you, mister? Oh, no, 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 senor. You are. All right, what's it all about? I tell you, senor, you are not only in the wrong room, you are in the wrong town. Uh, what makes you think that? Oh, I do not think this, senor. I know it. Who sent you, Maria? Senor, why don't you get yourself a good night's sleep, huh? And in the morning, you'll feel fresh and rested for the travel. No, it's quite the other way around. You're the one that's traveling out now. Uh, senor, you are a very stubborn man. One. <laughs> Sleep well, senor. <laughs> the one they call El Jefe? I am the law in Plata, if that is what you mean. My name's Adam Cartwright. I know what is your name. I know that you came into this town alone. I know that you are staying at the hotel. I also know that you asked the same questions too many times. Well, now, if you know all that, maybe you also know the name of the two men that were waiting for me in my hotel room and jumped me, huh? That is something that I probably do not know. Now, what do you intend to do about it? Senor, we did not ask you to come to Plata. Maybe it is better that you leave. Why should I leave? I just got here. Perhaps you are stepping on a dead man's toes. Carl Reagan was a friend of mine. Senor, it is time that you should know this. That you are a friend of Carl Reagan does not make you a friend of anybody in this town. Well, no, I didn't come to this town to make friends or enemies, either one. The man that you are seeking is dead. But even his memory is hated here. Is that enough, senor? Do you want to know more? Yes, I'd like to know how he died. The 
official records show that he was killed while attempting to escape jail. Escape jail? Now, why was he in jail? For murder. For 50 murders. But only for one that I could prove. Did he have a trial? Mm -hmm. He had a trial. Of course. And he was sentenced to hang. But he tried to escape. Senor, you ever see a man without a face? My deputy Gomez, a double barrel shotgun at close range. It was second best to hanging. I can't believe Carl was a murderer. You're lying, senor. Or else you do not know your gringo friend very well. I'm not lying. What reason would he have? Reason. That one needed no reason. He smuggled guns to renegade Indians. He robbed mine shipments. He was a killer. Is that reason enough? Well, no, I only have your word for this. Your loyalty touches me, senor. My loyalty is to a dying old man who loved his son. I weep for him. I made Carl's father a promise. When I came to this town to do something, and when I've done it, I'll leave. You'll leave a lot sooner, Senor Cartwright, or you will remain without the protection of the law. Oh, uh, what's that supposed to mean? What does that mean? Another gringo told me not long ago that he was in this town for peace and quiet, to become one of us, to learn our customs. And there was not one day of peace and quiet from the time that Senor Regan appeared. The road to our town goes two ways, senor. My advice is to go back to your own people. Ella Maria. I thought we had already said goodbye. No, you said goodbye. I didn't. Besides, I haven't the answers to my questions. Could I change your mind about having that drink? No, thank you. Well, maybe you could just sit with me. Hmm? I'm paid to talk to customers. It's part of my job. Now, it's very strange finding you working in a place like this. Why do you say that? Now, Carl was a proud man. Somehow, I just don't think he'd want his wife to work in a cantina. What was he like when you knew him? It was like a cult, which you can never break. Sometimes he was gentle, even sentimental. He, a man with a, with a restlessness. He never stand still. <laughs> Wanted me to go to Mexico with him when we were kids. You did not go? No, I... I put down roots on our ranch, Ponderosa. My father's there, my two brothers. It is good to have a family. Yeah. But a woman goes with her husband. Tell me, Maria. Was he as I remembered him? Were you happy with him? I married him. That's not what I asked. I do not know what you have heard. Some people did not like him. You saw good things in him. So did I. That's the Carl Regan I love. You're buying trouble. Well, now, since when did you start worrying about me? I didn't like Carl Reagan, but I do like Maria. She's a good kid, and I don't want any harm to come to her. Well, neither do I. It's a little late for that.
The gringo, Maria. What did he want? He does not have to be a concern of ours. But he is our concern. You were told not to talk to him, were you not? Be careful, Pablo. You're hurting your sister. If she is going to be a fool, then she will be hurt. Now, what did he say, huh? Please, Pablo, you're hurting me! Pablo is right, little one. It is a great concern to all of us. Tell us what the gringo said. Nothing! He said nothing and I told him nothing! Now tell me, little sister, what did he want? Just wanted to talk about Carlos, how we, how he was, how we met, about the marriage, if we were happy. He wanted to tell Carlos' father about those things. That's all I swear it! Yes, I'm all right. Why don't you leave us alone? These are the two that waylaid me in my hotel room. It was a mistake. They are my friends. Your friends? Some friends from the way you were screaming. Take care of his arm. He won't die. We're going to have a talk with El Happy. Let's go. Cartwright. Well, you told me not to expect any help from the law, so I'm taking care of it myself. It's one of the men that jumped me in my room. This is so, Pablo? See, Happy, it is all. I'm only sorry I didn't kill this gringo pig. All right, Cartwright. Put away your gun, or I will have to take it away. Que pasa? This gringo, this foreigner, he was molesting my sister. Your sister? I don't know what you're talking about. It is true, Jefe. Pablo came to me and told me this foreigner is spending much time with Maria. Well, I don't know whose sister she is. I was just asking her questions about her husband. I warn you, Cartwright. We do not like you gringos interfering in our affairs. All right, Pablo, you can go. What are you doing? Aren't you going to arrest him? For what? For defending the honor of his sister? My gun, gringo. Maybe it is Senor Cartwright who should be in the cell, eh, jefe? No, 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 no. Senor Cartwright, he is an intelligent man. He probably has enough intelligence to get out of Mexico now. If not, the cell will still be there. <laughs> Startle you. So you're still here? Yep, still here. But you can stop worrying about Maria. Has anything happened to her? Oh, no, she's all right. Why shouldn't she be? She hates gringos just as much as anyone else in this town. Oh, I guess that means you're getting ready to leave this beautiful village of ours. Well, I don't have much choice. <sighs> Unless I sleep in the street. You only let me have that room for one night. You can keep the room for another night. What made you change your mind? Maybe because that trail gang I told you about ain't coming in. Or uh, maybe because of Maria? All right. Maybe it is because of Maria. That girl's like a daughter to me. I ain't gonna cuss her out for the rest of my life just because she made a bad marriage. Well, I don't know that that's true. Was it a bad marriage? What did you expect? You must have known Carl Reagan was rotten to the core. Why don't you tell me about it? Ain't nothing to tell. Carl Reagan was a thief and a killer, and he used to beat Maria. She said she loved him. Well, don't try to understand that, Cartwright. You couldn't, <laughs> unless you were a woman. Uh, Pablo, is he, uh, is he really her brother? Yes, he's her brother, all right. But he might as well not be. He's scared, just like everybody else in this town. That's what Carl Reagan did to men. Pablo and uh, Juan, what was their connection with Carl? Go home, cowboy. This ain't no place for you. Get out while you still can. I'm not gonna leave here until I find out the truth about Carl. Now, if you know it, why don't you tell me? Why do you have to ask so many questions? Hello, Carl. You 
you recognize my voice, didn't you? I certainly did. I never thought I'd hear it again. Well, you wouldn't have, Adam. But you just had to ask questions, didn't you? Now, I don't want to have to kill you. But now that you know that I'm alive, I guess I'm going to have to. Now, you put your gun on that table nice and easy, like. I come a thousand miles to find a man raised from the grave like Lazarus. That's good. You always were the bright one, weren't you? The great Adam Cartwright. Bueller, you, you get us a bottle. Now, Adam and I, we haven't seen each other in years, have we? We got a lot to talk about. Sit down there. How's my father, Adam? Nearly blind. Nearly dead inside over you. And you can see how embarrassing it'd be if I let you go back and tell him I was still alive. Mm. Why'd you do it, Carl? All this. Bueller, why don't you go to bed? And keep your mouth shut. I know when I'm well off. <laughs> see, I had to, Adam. They were going to hang me. But I thought it real clever of me, you know, having myself declared dead now, don't you? Oh, yeah. Well, there was a man killed, Carl, now. Who was it? Who'd they bury in your place? Oh, now, Adam, now you don't ask questions like that. But I'll tell you, he was a man about my size, wore my clothes. He was a friend, too. And I suppose it was you that sent those two thugs after me, huh? Well, I, I was sorry about that. You, you always was a peaceful man. I thought that you'd think it out clear and uh, leave well enough alone. Why didn't you? Well, I suppose I had to find out about you for myself. You know, the law in this town doesn't have a very uh, charitable opinion of you. <laughs> yeah, El Heffy, he, he wanted me so bad he could taste it. Well, he's going to taste it even more when he finds out you're alive. Yeah, I guess so. So I can't let him find out, can I? I stay dead, Adam. It won't last, Carl. If it isn't El Jefe, it'll be somebody else. Well, you let me worry about that, won't you? And Maria? What about her? We used to play a little game, taking each other's girl. You remember that? Sure, I remember. Let me give you a little advice, my friend. You stay away from my wife. Come on, Carl. We're not kids anymore. And I'm not playing games anymore. What are you going to tell my father when you go back home? I had assumed I wasn't going back. I don't want to kill you, Adam. Now, you'd listen to a proposition, will you? I'd say under the circumstances, I don't have very much choice, do I? That's right. I wouldn't do this for anybody but you. But when you go home, I want you to tell my father I died of the fever, smallpox, something like that. You'll think of something. Beulah? She knows you're alive. Pablo, Juan, Maria. Beulah, she's afraid to talk. She knows me that well. Pablo and Juan, well, they want money as bad as I do. See, there's a silver shipment going through here day after tomorrow. I'm going to take it. You left out Maria. No, I didn't leave her out. She's in love with me. I guess I really never knew you, Carl. You are a mean one, aren't you? Yeah. And I'm going to be a rich one. After that silver shipment, I'm, I'm leaving Plata. There's other places to go, new worlds to conquer. Dead man, nobody looks for a dead man. And if I don't take your proposition? Then I'd be the one without any choice, wouldn't I? And I want you to get a good night's rest and be on your way to Virginia City by tomorrow night. Or? Or I'll kill you. Oh, 
Daniel Cartwright. I thought you would be gone by now. No, I have some information I think might interest you. It's possible, but I doubt it's probable. You know, I can tell you every move you make since you've been here. Well, now, if you can do that, then you can probably tell me that I saw an old friend last night. I was not aware that you had an old friend. I saw Carl Reagan. Senor, my pay is not the biggest pay. My job is not the easiest. It's too early in the morning for jokes. It's no joke. He's alive. I tell you, Carl Reagan is dead. Dead. And apparently you didn't take a very good look at the man that was killed in your jail. Do you know the effect of a double-barrel shotgun at close range? I know the man I'm talking about. I saw at close range. It was Carl Reagan. Senor, I do not know what it is that you are up to. But I tell you again, I do not like gringo tricks. Well, now, you're going to have a lot more than tricks to worry about. There's a silver shipment coming through here the day after tomorrow. Reagan's planning to take it and get out of the country. <laughs> silver shipment. Go for their plata mines, eh? Why don't you believe me? Why should I believe you? One moment you are his friend. And the next moment, you are accusing him. You wear two faces, senor. Well, if I do, it's because I know two Carl Reagans. When I first came to the plot, I was looking for an old friend. And now? Well, now I know what you told me about him was true. I do not like to deal with liars, senor. I'm telling you the truth. Carl Reagan's alive. His death was just a trick. If he is alive... He threatened to kill me if I didn't leave town. He meant it. If I don't go, he's gonna come looking for me. The Copa del Plata mine, that is the lifeblood of this town. Well, hadn't we better do something about it? Perhaps I've misjudged you, senor. If you have a plan, I will listen. I have a plan. When Carl finds out I came here to see you, he'll try to kill me. You stay close to me. Keep me in sight. I think maybe together we can handle it. Any man who believes that all men of one race are bad, because one man of that race is bad, this man is a fool. <laughs> I will not let you out of my sight. Well, I won't feel any the worse knowing that. Adam? Adam, I thought you left town. Is that what Carl told you? So you know. Yes, Maria, I know. You must leave. You must not stay here. Maria, I came here to find something kind to say to a grieving old man. Now, if you have something to tell me, I'll listen. was your friend. People change. Forget him, Maria. Can you forget him, Adam? First, he was like you said. Wild. But good wild. Gentle wild. To me, that is. He never hurt. He cared. He seemed to be needing to be loved to be wanted. And you? I wanted him to. I would have given up anything for him. Even my own people. It's all in the past, Maria. I'm telling you again, forget him. Forget him? He's alive and I'm his wife. Maria, come back to Virginia City. Back to Carl's father. You can start a new life there. I couldn't do that. I can't leave him. Too many memories. Maria, can't you realize they're all gone? That's all dead? It's as though he were really in that grave. I know that. But I must follow my heart. I must stay here. Okay. 
I tried. Yes, Adam. You tried. Jefe. It is quite late. It is getting dark, Gomez. I expected you back before this. Well, there were some matters to attend to, Jefe. I suppose there were. And there are some matters that I would like to talk to you about. Of course, Jefe. <sighs> These things you want to talk to me about, they are important? They are important. What do they concern? They concern a dead man who is not dead. And a man who is buried who is not Carl Reagan. But how can that be, Jefe? You saw the dead man with your own eyes. I saw his clothes. I saw the size of the man. His face I could not recognize. You... You saw to that! Gomez! You let that gringo corrupt you as he has corrupted the others! My pay here is poor, Jefe. I could not help it if a share of the silver shipments became attractive. The shipment tomorrow, a part of that is yours too. That is right, Jefe. I will share. Somehow I will stop you. It will be difficult for you if you are locked in your own jail. Inside, Hefe. Inside. And if you are counting on Adam Cartwright, I must tell you that that too has been taken care of. It's open. This just came for you. Mm, got the breath of a woman, it does. You don't let no grass grow under your feet, do you, Sonny? How'd it get here? Oh, a little tight came running in, flung it across the desk at me, ran out again without so much as a boo. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I must see you. It is important. My place. Maria. Come in, please. What's wrong, Maria? It is far enough, Gringo. Thanks. I could not help it. Pablo's little sister is a very obedient wife, senor. I will take care of this myself. You go and help senor Carlos. Tell him we will meet him after dark. Muy bien, Pablo. I tried to tell you. You have to admit, I tried to tell you. I heard every word you said. But not loud enough, huh, friend? Now, you know I can't let you leave this town alive. Not after you went and seen El Jefe. That's right, Adam. You're on your own. El Jefe, he's not going to be able to help you. Gomez, he took care of that. Well, that's who does your dirty work, huh? And Gomez is a very reliable man. Ain't that right, Pablo? That is right, Carlos. Why'd you do it, Adam? And why'd you stay? 
I just wanted to see if there wasn't one person in this town besides Maria that would have a decent word to say about you. It's never really mattered to me what people thought about me. You ought to remember that, Adam. I remember you like taking chances. <laughs> Why don't you uh, have brother-in-law here give me back my gun? You wouldn't shoot me, Adam. You're much too moral for that. Even if you would, it'd spoil things between you and Maria. Yeah. She'd hate you for the rest of her life. See, she's very moral, too, aren't you, Maria? Carlos, do not talk this way. You promised we would go away. I'll do anything you ask of me if you do not kill. Now, you see, I've got it straight. <laughs> this is not the first time you tried to take a girl away from me, Adam. Only this time it's different. This is my wife. You don't stop at anything, do you? Where do you think all this is going to get you? Where's it going to get me? It's going to get me a lot of money. That's what it's going to get me. But, Adam, you ought to understand that. All you Cartwrights always had a lot of money. Well, we worked for it. <laughs> we didn't get it this way. What difference does it make? I'm going to be rich. That's what matters. Think you'll live long enough to spend it? Yeah, I'll live long enough to spend it. Because I'm not going to let you or anybody else get in my way. No, Carlos. I cannot do this. I used to think there was good in you. I still want to believe that. Don't you know that? Pablo, take her away from me. <gasps> Carlos, if you kill Adam Cartwright, I'm going to tell El Jefe myself. I told you, Carlos, you cannot trust this one. I think you're right. If you can't trust someone, then what good are they? Now, you take him over me? No. All right, the grave's big enough for both of you. Pablo, you still loyal to me? Sir Carlos, I told you. Yeah, all right. Then I'm going to give you a chance to prove your loyalty. Shoot her. Carlos! <laughs> Pablo, what are you waiting for? Now, what are you waiting for? She's only your sister. Go ahead, your master's giving you orders. Shut up, gringo. You would gladly kill. We're not talking about me, we're talking about her. You're talking too much, Adam. Pablo, I'm waiting. You heard him, he's waiting. Don't tell me you got trouble with your conscience. Think of all that silver. No. No, but this, I cannot do it. Pablo is soft. I will kill her for you. Kill her! Smart, Adam. You're good. But you always were good, even as a kid. You, you tell my father that I thought about him. I thought about him often. Murray? About. Uh... I had built my jail too strong. When Gomez locked me in, I could not get out. But thanks to you, Gomez is finding out the same thing. <laughs> you know, senor, I had made up my mind that there would be no more gringos in this town. But that was wrong. You are welcome anytime. And you're welcome on the Ponderosa, El Jefe. You still have time to change your mind, Maria, and come along with me. I know Carl's father would like it. No, Adam. I must stay here with my people. Goodbye, Maria. You love. Goodbye, Adam. Vaya con Dios, amigo. She was a beautiful gal, Mr. Reagan. Ask her to come visit you sometime. Oh, I'd like that. 
I hope I didn't ask too much of you asking you to bring my boy back home. Not at all. He was a fine boy, wasn't he, Adam? Wasn't he a good boy, Ben? Yes, yes, he was a good boy. I'm glad he got married and settled down. I'll bet he was a good husband. Wasn't that what she said, Adam? When she talked about Carl, it was just like we knew him. She loved him very much, Mr. Reagan. That's what I wanted to hear. Well, thanks, Adam. Thanks again. Come on, babe. I did the right thing, Pa. You did the right thing, Adam. You brought a man's son back to him. Je t'en ai